right. Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Today, my guest, Zachary Tyler Rubble of Baker's Dozen. How you doing? Hey, I'm good, man. How are you? I'm great, man. Good, I'm man. great. Really? Yeah, and we were talking before about, you know, doing uh, all kinds of good stuff for our bodies, exercise routines, meditation routines, yes, eating sir. healthy and shit. Yeah. Uh, what are you up to for uh, your personal routines that you've been getting on? Uh, you know what, man? I mean, I'm still currently working. I'm thankful for that but uh as far as like personal routines i'm getting back into working out just like the basics kind yeah of building that back up um trying to eat like fruits and veggies man more of that cutting like dairy products all that shit that's like bad for you man i just i can't do it anymore yeah you know no I mean? it doesn't feel good either man no. like uh uh, we've been also doing the vegetarian and fruits and nuts and everything like that, man. And uh, yeah. I, I feel amazing, honestly. Like, I yeah. feel a lot lighter. Every time I eat something, there's no real digestive issue or, like, I don't get bloated from smashing a bunch of red meat sure. or, like, weighed down. Right. Um, it's just like, oh, yeah, I eat food and I'm still fine and I'm I'm still moving and I'm still kicking ass. And it's like, yeah. I really like it, actually. I mean, you know, it's just a, it's a new thing for us, but so far... Yeah. Vegetarian is really great. I tell a difference, man. Like, I just, because back then, like, I could, like, oh, yeah, cheese, no problem, milk, blah, blah, blah. Let's mix the two, and, you know, I feel great. But now, like, being 28, man, it's just, like, fuck, yeah. I can't, dude. Like, I have a glass of milk, and I'm just, like, five minutes in. Oh, know? no. Dude, yeah. I don't know. It's just 28 for me has been, like, a growing year for me. Yeah. And, like, I've learned a lot more. I just, I don't know. I feel more mature. Of course, you are. Your twenties, you know what I mean. But it happens fast. Yeah, dude, it, happens it does. Fast. Uh, I that 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 big three zero caught up to me super fast. Like oh, sure. I, I lived my twenties hard as fuck, man. Yeah. I was moving and grooving and doing as much as I could. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I was just like, oh man, I'm not twenty anymore. Right. This is like, it was a total, you know, trip, man. That it mm. happened so fast. I mean. Yeah. 10 years is not a long time and it's just and you don't even really count it until you're 21 right so it's really only nine years yeah because it's like until you're 21 you can buy alcohol it's like well sure. then i'm still just a kid yeah you know, this is bullshit yeah man uh yeah so i mean enjoy the last two years dude, while you got them I, bro because you're not gonna be 20 for much longer i know dude i'm i'm kind of not well i'm very laid back and old fashioned if that makes sense man yeah. like i was never like in my earlier 20s i was never like a party or dude or like oh yeah i'm gonna go smashing tonight dude i'm gonna fucking drink all this and that like I'm, i was never a party or dude i'm like hey man let's just like set a bonfire up and fucking strum a few chords and let's just talk about shit dude nice you know what i mean like i'm more of like with nature not like Oh, I'm going to go to the Greg's house and fucking party it up and throw up all over myself and fucking, <laughs> that was, <laughs> I, I see, I just, I can't, oh, man. I that was so couldn't. me, That was bro. you, dude? Yeah, yeah, no, me and all my friends, we found alcohol real young, so we, yeah. uh, we associated our happiness directly with alcohol and we just oh. were like, for the longest time, man, uh when we're throwing parties or whatever yeah. we didn't even buy fucking food you know like that was not our concern it was how right. much booze can we get yeah the liquor and all yeah. that yeah man and we just drank ourselves until Dude. we fucking threw up and passed yeah. out and it's like you know god knows what time in the morning the sun's coming up you know yeah. and it's just it didn't uh it it was a ridiculous thing i'm glad uh you escaped that uh Dude. trap because that's yeah. what it is it's a trap it's it is it's bullshit yeah i've lost a lot of friends through alcohol man it's just like i just can't dude you know it's just yeah. like one of those things where i have other things i want to do with my life and you know i that was just not my thing man i mean i yeah. think the worst i've ever been hung over was uh I had like six Irish car bombs, man. That's my first time coming out to Vegas, by the way. Oh, yeah. I went to a, a local bar, man, and I was just like, yeah, sure, Vegas, fucking party city. Let's go hit it up, dude. <laughs> and uh, I had six Irish car bombs, man, and then four beers. Oh. And I shit you not, dude. Like, I passed out in the bar. Yeah. So the bartender and one of the employees had to carry me out, dude. My fucking <laughs> arms and legs, like the bartender had my arms, and then the fucking employee had my legs, and they just kind of like set me on a park bench, dude. And woke up the next morning on yeah. a fucking park bench. <laughs> See, we would, yeah. Me and my friends would be like, "Epic, we're so, yeah. such a legend," you know. And it's just like <laughs> just bragging about what alcoholics we are because it's just such a denial about what a negative impact it's having on our existence. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, 
Now they're like, none of us fucking drink anymore. All my buddies yeah. that we grew up just partying and smashing booze as much as we can. Even yeah. when, like, uh, like I quit drinking, right? And, like they still have beers every once in a while. But even when they're having beers, yeah, they're not getting fucked up, you know. Like, right. and we're only in our mid thirties. I mean, I know plenty of people that still parties through their thirties and forties, and they never get that lesson where it's really? just like. There's better shit to do than just yeah. poison your liver. That's, I mean, for some people, man, that's all they do. That's yeah. that's what their life's about, man. You know, it's just alcohol, and it's, it's a shame because it's like, dude, there's more to life than than this, man. You yeah. Know, we have, me and my wife have next-door neighbors that just constantly party, dude. And they're like, <laughs> they're early 20s, man, and they always are inviting me and my wife over like, hey, you guys want to mm. smoke and drink and all that shit? I'm like, dude, honestly, no. I'm kind of like... I feel like that old grandpa, it's like, no, no thanks, son. But yeah. thank you, though. I appreciate the offer. <laughs> I'm such an old timer, man. Yeah, dude. Yeah. yeah it's no, an old that, soul, man. That's it, though, man. I mean, if you're if you're drinking and partying, that's what you're doing with your day, and that's what you're yeah. doing with your tomorrow, too, because you're going to be a mess tomorrow. You're not going to yeah. be focused. You're not going to be getting anything really done because you're going to be hungover shit. And, right. Yeah, it's just terrible, man. It's yeah. it's. it's I don't know. There's plenty of excuses you can give yourself. People are great at rationalizing that that lifestyle is totally okay. Sure. And I mean, honestly, when when you're in your early twenties, fucking go get it. Just like go, go, go for it, get man. it, man. You know, yeah. or do it. Do it your whole life. Who gives a shit? You know, right. no one's making it out of this place alive. <laughs> yeah. But especially um, with what's going on right now, dude. What's yeah. the future for this year, dude? Or the rest of the? No, we're time gonna wait till the planet. election, and then the games will stop being played, right? Uh, yeah. I just hope um, Biden doesn't, I don't know, man. It's just like these two. Ne neither option's good for yeah. anybody, you know? Yeah. But, uh. Mr. Dementia is like, yeah. I call him. That's it. It's like, yeah. well, and, and what are we going to hand the power back to the, the fucking evil empire? The right. fucking, you know, the True. deep state? <laughs> it's like at least that the bumbling yeah. moron just pisses all those people that are stealing our tax money off. I know. Yeah, at least he's just blatantly blasting every ridiculous concept he has in his head out through Twitter. Yeah. Like, you know, it's 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 nice to have a fucking bumbling idiot we can keep track of at least as opposed sure. to this dark underground like let's just fuck everybody as hard as we can and right. I'm fucking freedom. Yeah. It's just like no man. Yeah. No. I had an interesting conversation at my job uh yesterday. Yeah. With this older woman and she was like, you know, like Elon Musk, like he's he's kind of a weird dude. He's out there yeah. and uh didn't he like launch something in space recently? Jeez, that's their or, awareness of reality right now? Yeah, dude. Like she was just like, Well what do you just just hear me out here. Like how how do you, how would you feel if like there's like tiny microchips in the air and we're breathing it in already. Like just microscopic little tiny, like you can't even see it, dude. We're breathing it in. They're already controlling us. And I was like, they don't a, have to do that. They have yeah. CNN and Fox. And people right. are really dumb. <laughs> That's what I thought too, man. I was just like, yeah. I don't know where you're coming from, man, but mm. yeah, sure. Like, the, First of all, they don't though, because yeah. I, I follow that whole technological evolution of everything. Yeah. And um, while nanorobotics is, is a definitely an emerging field, it's not going to be a, a anywhere near that level until mm -hmm. at least like the mid 2030s at the rate we're going. Yeah. Um, but it's it's just not viable now. It's not that it's not viable in the future. Right. But there's all kinds of weird shit that's going on. But another thing Elon Musk is doing is he's he's working on surrounding the planet with satellites so that we just all have free internet. See, and I I like that, dude. Honestly, I think that's a great he's, idea. He's just changing the world. Yeah, he is. And he'll, and I'm sure he'll just sell whatever you're surfing on through his stuff. If you're, if you're surfing through Elon Musk stuff, you know, yeah. he's going to use it and sell that information to people to send advertisements your way or whatever. Right. He has to do to recoup the cost of launching thousands of satellites into the <laughs> atmosphere. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a trip what that guy's doing, man. Yeah. It is a total trip. He's just uh, on another And I love his Twitter feed. Because oh, yeah, he yeah. has just, the whole, ever since the pandemic happened, that uh -huh. dude has been taking psychedelics like crazy. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. everything he says is like exactly what you'd say in the middle of a mushroom trip, you right. know? <laughs> it's like, I'm selling all my house, or yeah. all my houses. I don't need any <laughs> property on this physical plane <laughs> anymore or some shit houses, like that. Dude. <laughs> it's just like, damn, Elon, fuck, put the phone away when you're tripping. He That's named his son do. something weird, man. I can't, what was it? It was like AE17 or something like that. Something, man. Yeah. They they, they change it to a real name. <laughs> they finally change it to a real name. I told my I told my wife this man. I was like, dude, what if like Elon Musk is like an actual like alien in disguise? He's just using a cloaking device to look like a human. Yeah. 
You know, I'm, I mean, that dude's just, I don't know, man. I watched the Joe Rogan show with him, and he's just something off about him, dude. I don't know. It's uh, XAEA-12. That's what it is. That's. I told my wife, I was like, yeah, E equals MC squared. <laughs> <laughs> name of that boy. Yeah, well, when you're uh, when you're that far out there and that intelligent, of course you're going to seem like a complete nut job to the rest of us because, right. you know, he's he's got a supercomputer going on. And sure. We got... We got outdated technology in our right. brain compared to his. Oh, dude, yeah. I mean, the stuff that he did coming up is insane, you know? And he mm-hmm. was, like, the first person to uh, create a digital phone book for the Internet. Yeah. And then he came up with PayPal, like a way to pay for things. You know, he just took the digital phone. And he, what did he, he came up with a game, too, when he was really young. Really? Yeah, he wrote a computer game when he was really young. Oh, shit. And so that led to, like, him being able to do the phone directory, being able to, that led to him doing PayPal. Yeah. And then with the PayPal money, I believe is how he started like Solar City and the Tesla stuff. That's fucking crazy. And man. then he was just, yeah, dude, dude was broke as fuck again. And then, yeah. uh, yeah, he eventually got the, he, he got the SpaceX stuff going too. And mm-hmm. then everything shit the bed on him and yeah. he sold everything he had and like, and spent every dime he had to keep all three companies floating. Instead wow. of like, let that one go, keep your mansion and your lifestyle. Sure. And he literally, Elon Musk, sleeping on his friend's couch. Yeah. Because he's like, well, I don't give a shit about money. He's like, I'm trying to change the world. It's required sacrifice, sacrifice, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter to him. To other people, it's just like, that's so insane that you would just give up millions and millions of dollars. Right. But he, he could, man. He, he was not afraid of taking that risk, man. Yeah, it doesn't mean anything to him. Yeah. He's just like, whatever. Yeah. You know, he's I'm trying not, better. He's not attached world. to the money. Yeah. Yeah. That's Which. A, that's a problem, man. I mean, yeah. like, a lot of people are just so attached to, like, just a piece of paper, man. Yeah. And it, it doesn't even matter in the end, dude. Like, it's like, yeah, like, that's the problem, man. Like, a lot of people are just so stressed out about money, dude, and, like, bills and, like, all that stuff. They're trying to, like, get ahead, you know, but you're not really living in the now. Yeah. And I know we talked about this earlier. Yeah, um, well, I mean, um, you know, aversion and desire are the root causes of of human suffering sure uh, if you're if you're trying to get away from negative feelings or trying to collect positive feelings yeah those attachments to yeah. the, this world are what are causing all your suffering right and so in the example of like what we we're talking about with elon where he's just look at how fucking stoked that guy is about everything right and he's not right. he's not worried about the yeah. money or dozens of failures that are occurring in public in the public eye you know like i mean yeah. I, I watched the one where he launched a rocket he had to blow it up because it was going off course and mm-hmm. trying to land those uh rockets back on the platforms Platform. in the middle of the ocean and how many of those wow. fell over and, and exploded and how much money that i mean it, yeah. just failure after failure after failure and millions and t- tens of millions of dollars right and uh it just doesn't phase that dude he's just like no that's i'm not worried about any of those things right you know, oh yeah we'll dude. get and, there yeah nothing's gonna be perfect at first man you gotta keep trying and trying and trying that's yeah. the, that's the key with anything in life dude you know it's just like you can't be you can't just sit down and just like expect to be like amazing at guitar or bass or like you know or exercising or anything like that man and i feel yeah. like some people just like adapt to that like thinking it's like oh i can do this so i you know egos yeah with lots of practice you can yeah you can do anything yeah, I t- that, I accomplish anything in life, man. I fucking say that dude's got human hands, right, and a human brain just like I do. Right. I'll fucking go do that. I'll go yeah. do that. You know, maybe not right now, but I'll practice my ass off just like it took that dude. Sure, and I'll get there eventually if yeah. it means that much to me. Right. If it doesn't, whatever. Yeah. Speaking of which, dude, I know you're a big like Les Claypool fan. Have of you seen that uh, cover? Of him with Tool and all that on your Mastodon Facebook page, Co- dude. I watched it before you, you came over here. Yeah, it was dude. epic. It was amazing, man. God damn, and it's Getty Lee's birthday today too, man. Ah, oh, Getty Lee, bro, that's yeah. tight. Yeah, dude. That's he's awesome. Like Seven thousand one hundred five years old today. Yeah, he's super Still old today, right? Nice, man, I yeah. saw. Um, I saw Getty. Um, play the 39th year because i know they went 40 years i missed the 40 year one but the oh, one did? right before that one i saw him perform and he was still killing it yeah dude he's such a good singer and uh i th- i will have the uh documentary of them beyond the lighted stage i love that documentary dude have you yeah. seen it Mm-mm. oh my god i highly recommend it it's on uh i think it's on netflix but um <laughs> there's just like one part where uh rage's bass player i forget his name um he's talking about it. he's like yeah like I've heard rumors that Getty Lee's nose is so big that 
he just pushes the microphone like out of the way with his nose. <laughs> and I just want to see that happen. Tim Crawford. Tim Crawford, that's his name. Thank you. Yep. Um and I'm like, dude, like I want I want a big nose. Like fuck. Like <laughs> can do a lot of things with a big nose, man. You can move your microphone over, you can fucking I don't know. The, the options schnoz. Are really the schnoz, dude. But uh yeah, man, I I'm so jealous of my girl because she saw Rush out here mm-hmm. at MGM and I was like, Oh my god, dude. I've always wanted to see Rush. Rush is like one of my favorite bands, dude. They were epic. I uh yeah. They played for like 90 minutes and then there was like an intermission and they had videos and like, it was like the intermission was an intermission, right? It was still like, yeah. it was like a 15 minute movie really? that they put together and stuff's happening on the stage and shit. Mm-hmm. And then they come back out to do another 90 minutes. And it's like, we've been here for three hours and 15 minutes being entertained. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that's it. I was like, yeah. that's it. Oh, I could sit here for another three friggin' hours, man. Like keep playing, <laughs> play yeah. every, every album in a row now. I don't like it when bands do that too, man. The intermissions, like yeah. Tool did that when I, me and my wife saw him this year. Like yeah. they had like a little, it was like 10 minute intermissions. Like, bro, you're killing the vibe, man. Just keep yeah. fucking pushing through, man. I think it's, uh, it's because of the intense musicianship though, where true. you get to a certain point and you're like, uh, we keep doing this. Yeah. But it will it will get progressively worse from this point, mm-hmm. and then or we could just take fucking ten minutes real quick, right? Smoke a joint, like just, chill in the back, and just drink some water and let my hands rest for a second, right? All right, let's go do it. I'm warmed up, yeah. you know. Although, so it's like I think a lot of times they're trying to give you the best experience doing that, sure. where they want to really. Those are people that care about nailing the performance more and than anything. I respect that too, man, because like some bands that just power through. Yeah, I mean, you just you get to a point where, because I've played well when I was in the ACDC tribute band with Tommy, like we would just go three hours without a break, man. Yeah, yeah. The singers are getting a break. <laughs> yeah, this, right, because they're swapping out, dude. I, and I'm like on the stage working my ass off, dude. Like it's it creeps up on you, man. Like, oh yeah, man. You you're up there fucking doing the Angus Young thing and oh, dude. getting all over there with the school kid outfit on. Dude, yeah. I just I've never worked out so hard in my life, dude. But it was. Really cool because, you know, being my one of my heroes, man, like that was just like, oh my God, like I get to be him. Yeah, those know, are jamming like, tunes too. So it's like yeah. you're up there having fun. Yeah, man. And was that the first time I met you too? Was that Vamped? Probably. I think it was Counts Vamped. Probably. I think he did. It was backstage and uh, Tommy's like, yeah, dude, this is Jason. Jason, this is Zach. And I was like, oh, what's up, man? And I think you did something like weird, dude. You're like, here, Tommy, check this out. You did like this like little like handstand thing and you like lifted your legs up. You're like, oh. I was like, I was like, this fucking dude, man. Like, is he a Jedi or some shit? Tommy's like, pretty cool, right? It's like, yeah, man, my name's Jason. <laughs> and just fucking went on the night, dude. I love That's how that we met, so man. much. Tommy like, and I are always doing like weird yoga shit. Yeah. So I was, uh, <laughs> that's, and I know what you're talking about too, because um, that was when I was doing, I think, the like, P90X2 stuff. Yeah. And they were do they do this crazy crane leg extension. Oh man! And when I could get it down, like anybody that was a yoga buddy of mine, I was like, check this shit out, bro. Like, <laughs> and they're just like, fuck you, dude. Try I can't believe up, you could bro. do that. Yeah. Now I have an even worse version of it, which yeah. is, uh, which I can I can't do all the way yet. I have to mm-hmm. stop on each position. But it's like kick the leg. You do you go up into your fucking crane and you yeah. kick them out this way yeah. and then you kick them out that way, which is just ridiculous. And then yeah. you bring it in and then one leg at a time, back, back, oh and then God, handstand. Dude. Wow. And I have to take a break in between right yeah. now. Like I kick them out and mm-hmm. then like coming back in and getting my posture back together just yeah. kills me to the point where I have no energy to get my core extended the other direction. So it's like See, Child's pose in the middle of it. Damn, dude, I want to get to that point, man. It's just like I want to be able to like get yeah. both legs up in the air, dude. And I'm just like, I'm still doing push-ups, man. I'm still doing squats, like I'm yeah, just slowly but surely getting into that stuff, man. And uh, but yeah, that's my goal is to like be, be that flexible. Yeah, because I'm gonna work on it every day. Yeah, dude. I just. But it just now, it just like traumatized me. I'm like, holy shit, this guy's a fucking ninja, dude. <laughs> like, just like both. Uh, I think he like, yeah. I don't know. He had both legs like on the right hand side. I'm like, mm. this fucking guy. It's so hard to do. It's a lot of core strength yeah. and a lot of flexibility. And uh, yeah. and so yeah, it's fun to show off because no one's gonna be able to do it that isn't <laughs> practicing that. Like if yeah. I stop doing it every, you know, I I do my yoga like twice a week. Uh, and uh, 
if I stop that that ritual and, yeah. and that practice, then I can't fucking do that. I can't do that at all. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no, I can do it right now because I've been really good this month. Uh, yeah. And like more recently, I've been really focused and not missing days. And yeah. so shit's getting tight. Shit's really. That's awesome. Move in. I was um, I was working on my my flexibility this morning. I'm trying to go full splits both ways, which I, I used to be able to do the forward and backwards. Yeah. I've never been able to do. I saw that picture of Joe Rogan on Facebook <laughs> recently. You seen that? No. Where what? he's he's spread out wide. Oh my god. And dude. um, yeah. Here I'll, I'll fucking, I bet I can find it. Um, like he's like spread eagle, dude. Dude's or got such good flexibility, and he's old. Sure, he's man. he's getting up there, man. He's and like, he can still just kick ass. It's as really? long as you're as long as you're doing it, man. You know your body's not gonna just shit out on you. It's when you stop, right? You know, it's like look at Jack, uh, old, old shit of Jack Lalane, man. I mean, when he was right. eighty, what he he pulled eighty boats with eighty people in them behind him, like yeah. uh, I think I think beast, eighty man. kilometers or something like that, or eighty. It had something to do with eights again, right? And uh, <sighs> the Jack Lalane shit was ridiculous. Yeah, here he is. Here it is. I'll pull it up right here. <laughs> Pull a big shot of it up. Get big. Get yeah, Joe big. Rogan's at least he's got to be like fifty something, man. Look at this there. dude. Oh my god, that is amazing. Wow, amazing. And he's a big dude. You know, like yeah. he's got uh, he's got solid muscle mass and solid flexibility. That's <laughs> I, I just respect the shit out of Joe Rogan, man. That is uh, that's impressive. So I was like, man, I got to get back on it. I was getting my I was doing my frog for a real long time, yeah. getting my hips spread out, and I just been. I've been torturing my hips. My hips hate me right now yeah. because I'm like, oh, you're gonna get tortured. Until, oh, dude, I've been doing planks, you man. Spread it, you know. You gotta spread them legs <laughs> all <laughs> the got way, to, man. Yeah, uh, to get flexible, man. I've been doing planks, dude. I've been doing uh, side planks, which they are. Uh, you just like put all your weight against this, dude, and you mm -hmm. lift up, and for like a minute, fifteen, dude. Yeah, I I'm like fucking shaking. I'm like. Ugh! Like I'm about to like give out, dude. I'm like, shit. No, you got to keep going, man. Just fucking breathe. You got this, man. Like, it's hard, dude. Oh, you yeah. know, because I back then I used to work out all the time, dude. And I'm slowly but surely getting back into it. You know. Yeah, it's I'm one of those things. To, yeah. It ebbs and flows with your life. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's not it's not a bad thing to to drop off every sure. once in a while or like beat yourself up about it. Like right. I try to get. Uh, I'll always end up in my own head. I, I'm pretty good about it now. Yeah. But um. Before, I used to be more in my head about, oh, you haven't been working out as hard as you, you know, what the hell's wrong with you? And it's like, oh, man, yeah, yeah this life life happens. Right. She gets in the way, and then you get back to it. And as long as you're getting back to it, that's the important thing. Yeah. You're getting back on it, man. Just be, you know, fuck yeah. You're yeah. awesome. Yeah, that, that was kind my... Of, that kind of attitude. That's my downfall, man. It's like, I... Because uh, back then, I used to have, like, a lot of uh, issues with myself, like, just not really confident in some shit like especially like with like guitar playing too man because it's yeah. just like i know i'm not the best you know and i who is i'm still right exactly man but you'd be surprised man there's a lot of people it's like oh yeah i can do this like i'm technical i'm perfect you know it's just like there's always someone better right exactly man and the way i look at it dude it's just like as far as playing, like, cause i'm still learning dude yeah. like you know back then i used to be like into punk rock and uh um early rock like acdc like just simple stuff man and i really think uh players that play with their soul have more of an effect on me yeah. like when it comes out raw and just like you never know what's gonna happen that's that's what strikes me dude as like okay that dude is on it versus like oh yeah i can play these notes like ingve malmsteen yeah. dude like that ingve dude. sucks he does, man. He's. Have you ever seen that fucking video, man, of like his guitar collection? <laughs> he's showing the dudes like, "Hey, check this out. It's a 1976 Strat." He just, he just so fucking full just of himself. throws it against like the other Strats, dude. Yeah, just like bangs it. Like, oh, I don't give a shit. Yeah, it's you know? like that attitude is so. It's so shitty. Man. It's a turnoff. It's like, yeah. I don't like you anymore. Like right. I heard your music and I was like, yeah. "Damn, this guy's pretty, pretty legendary." <laughs> yeah. And then you like yeah. see like five minutes of him just opening his just, fucking arrogant ass mouth, and yeah. you're like, "Man, just I don't know, the fucking ego, man." Yeah, you know. And there's like millions of other players that try to be like him. It's like, dude, you're not gonna be like him, man. Just yeah. try to be yourself. Come yeah. up with. And that was the thing with me, man. When I started getting into music and guitar players, because back then I wanted to be a drummer, man. I wanted to be a drummer. That's what I started out as, too. Drums? Drums was my first instrument. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I I saw um, John Bonham for the first time, dude, and I was like, I want to be that guy, dude. I just, 
I loved how he played and how hard he was hitting the crap out of him, dude. Because I was an angry kid back then, like my younger days. And, uh, you know, I just, I wanted to play everything, dude. At that point, it's like, I want to play drums. I want to play bass. I want to play guitar. I want to play harmonica. I want to sing. I want to do it all, dude. Um, and at first, I thought I was going to be a drummer for the longest time. And then when I saw ACDC and Angus, like it was a Thunderstruck video, that's what set me off, dude. Was just like, this guy is fucking awesome. Like, oh, energetic, yeah. wacky on stage, just wild, dude. Like, doesn't give a shit what anyone else thinks, man. I'm, and I respect that, dude, you know? Because a lot of musicians, when they perform, they take it so seriously. They just, like, they're sticks in the mud, like, <laughs> don't fuck up the C chord, man. Yeah. Oh, shit, I did. You know, yeah. it's just like, they, people don't think, think about too it. much. Yeah, man. It's like, why are you why are you working so hard at this to get up on stage? You know, you're like, Oh, a, that looks like fun. Right. And yeah. then you're like, oh, okay, put a band together, right. practice, 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 get to the fucking show. You've been working months on this to go. That seemed like fun. I'm going to get up and have fun and then right. stress yourself out the whole time. Yeah. And, and you forget yeah. to have fun. And it's like, you only need a 30 minute set and guess what? It's going to feel like three seconds. <laughs> exactly. man. <laughs> yeah, dude. And that's like a lot of players like tend to forget that, man. It's like, they take it so serious. Like, Bro, yeah. it's fine, man. Just go up on stage, have fun, be you, you know. And um, I don't know, man. A lot. It's it's just it's hard. It's hard to like. I get it. Like gain that like uh, comfortability, if that's yeah. a word, um, and get used to like being around like other people and people seeing you play. Like I get that, man. Stage fright was like really big on me dude like because of my first band i ever started i sung and played guitar yeah i was like fuck man like i gotta do two things at once or don't fuck it up and uh it just takes time man like you know it took me a while to like get comfortable and i was like okay like this is my place this is what i need to do um but uh besides angus dude my other influence was tony iomi oh tony iomi was a man dude wooden fingers that's right dude yep the yeah. riff lord himself. All his fingertips on his uh, on left his hand. fret hand. Yeah. Or no, right right hand. Right. Was he left handed. He was left handed too, was he? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, on his, whichever one, his fret hand yeah. was, they were all wooden fingertips. Yeah. He, uh, have you ever seen That's that? Such bit, a man? trip. Yeah, dude. He, uh, on YouTube, there's like a like short, like 45 second, like, uh, clip of he explains like what happened he used to work in a machine factory i think they, they all did England. right yeah yeah and uh dude he just like he was like you know just doing his job and like he would i forget what he did but uh he would take like pieces of metal and just like under like a machine that would like cut it in half i think mm -hmm. and then sure enough cut his fingertips off and dude like kudos to that man that was like no i'm not gonna fucking give up he found a way dude to yeah. like make it work become one of the most legendary guitar players of all time dude yeah i respect that and just i think yeah it was acdc and then sabbath man i think the other video i was turned on to was uh paranoid that was with the white sg with a three pickup man i was like fucking that's my holy grail dude i want that sg man and i looked on it online actually this morning it's like seven thousand dollars of course like jesus christ dude like just get a that's replica same. ESP. That's what <laughs> or LTD. It's not the same, bro. It's not Gibson. You gotta go Gibson, bro. Yeah, pictures look the same. <laughs> yeah. But uh, uh yeah, man, I was just honestly like starting off as music, I was just influenced by like a lot of guitar players. Yeah. You know, like it was Angus and Tony, those were like the top two dudes, and then I got into uh funk guitar playing, man. I love that shit. I love it, dude. I uh my mom turned me on to, so this is funny, it's like my mom turned me on to like ABBA and uh, BG's Cool in the Gang, Casey's Sunshine Band. Some funky bands. I loved it, man. I loved it. Yeah, it's funky-ass you know, music. One of the tightest like rhythm sections ever, ever, dude. Like, they're just flawless. Um, and then my dad turned me on, he's like, oh, you like disco? Well, check this out. Fucking metal. He put on, <laughs> and I was like seven or eight, dude. He turned on Master of Puppets, and back then... Oh, that's as a, heavy. As a seven-year-old? Yeah, dude, and I'm, like, listening to Master of Puppets. I'm like, oh, I can fuck with this. Yeah, this fuck is cool. Yeah. He's like, yeah, you think that's cool? Check this out. Pantera, vulgar display of power. Yeah, it's I'm over. Like, it's over, dude. <laughs> Once you bring Pantera into the mix, you're done. Yeah. That's the... 
best fucking metal out there, man. Oh, we were just talking about Pantera. She's like, no oh, was, I think Angela said something about, I mean, not everybody, every, every song on every album is good. And I was like, unless right. you're Pantera. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, man. Dude. Those guys don't write bad songs. No, not at all, man. And uh, that's just the craziest thing too, man. Cause when my dad showed me Pantera and like he had the, all the uh, vulgar videos, the, the home videos, I think. Of course. Oh, dude. Like, I was like, I want to meet these guys one day. And sure as shit, like, I met Vinny and Rex, dude. Nice. You know, I was just like, wow. Like, life is just seriously strange, dude. Like, I met some of my idols yeah, <laughs> as a yeah. kid, man. You know, it's just, it's a cool feeling. But, uh, yeah, my dad turned me on to the dark side for a while, man. Like, he got me into <laughs> Pantera and then black metal stuff and death metal. Black metal's cool, man. Dude, like, uh, Emperor. I love Emperor. Oh, my God, dude. And they're supposed to play at Psycho Las Vegas this year. Oh, really? But they, yeah, they moved it to next year, man. Have you ever been to Psycho out here? No. No? Oh, it's great, man. It's great. I went two years ago, and uh, it was Sleep, High on Fire, um, fucking Baroness, Fu Manchu. I love all those bands, dude. Stoner Rock, Stoner Metal. That's my, that's my kryptonite, dude. Nice. And I've been getting more and more into that recently. Yeah, I've been... Um... Man, I've been going to see some weird shows last year and uh, some kick-ass shows last year. Uh, I saw Primus a bunch. That's like my favorite band, of course. So yeah. anytime Les Claypool's playing, mm -hmm. I'm fucking there. Yeah. You know, like that's that's not even a question. Right. And it's just like, of course I'm going. So Primus and Slayer was pretty tight. Oh, that's, that's right. They toured together, huh? Yeah. Oh, no Slayer shit. asked Primus. Really? They asked him directly to come on the tour with them because they like them. <laughs> they like, they, they awesome. play together a bunch, you know, and they're... Yeah. They're pretty cool guys, man. Like, they're really nice people and oh, shit. easy to hang out with. So I'm sure yeah. that that had a lot to do with it. Yeah. But they played, you know, they came out and did a 90-minute, like, Stick Primus thing. set. You right. know, it wasn't like, um, it was like, here's all the songs you guys probably heard from the movies we were in, you know? Right. And then uh, <laughs> it wasn't like a Primus show where you go yeah. and, and fucking drop and, like, they're going to play three hours of psychedelic insanity where every sure. song is 15 minutes and you don't know what the fuck's happening. And they just, they just play four songs in one. <laughs> yeah, dude. It's just I like, don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah. Man. And I guess that's why a lot of people like hate them because they're like, I don't get this or oh, right. I think I get it and I don't like it. And it's yeah. like, that's cool, man. You yeah. know, my favorite thing people say is, um, is that, Oh, they're just playing random notes, and it's all janky, like, dumbass kid music, and sure. they don't know what they're doing. And I was like, well, yeah. you should learn how to play the songs, Yeah, come back to me <laughs> when you can do what they're doing, yeah. and you realize the scales they're playing all their stuff in are amazing, and it's all real yeah. shit. They're just, you're down here, right? and they're way up here way up over there, your man. fucking head, exactly, just like yeah. they were for everybody else until you start, like, obsessing about it and learning about it, because it just sounds like weird yeah. shit at first right and then fucking anthony learning the solos and yeah. like learning this all the songs individually how it works yeah and yeah you're just like oh that's beautiful man like when he sh yeah. comes in he goes dude i was up all night check it out comes in and shows you note for note and i just go fucking larry lalonde man i mean yeah dude unbelievable yeah that I, that's what he came up with to less's crazy yeah funk bass gibberish yeah i've always respected his playing too man it's like not yeah. a whole lot of people get it it's like dude no. like this guy <laughs> i mean claypool yeah he's the master dude but like of what course. larry did like here man like let's add this to that like just they made it work dude yeah like he, they, they were just thinking outside the box and larry's just like yeah i'll play this whatever it may say it may sound out of tune but i'll make it fucking work man oh yeah you just find ways around it dude you know and those type of guitar players, too, man, I respect, too, man, because they think outside the box, like, oh, you know, this might sound like shit, but it's not going to. Yeah. You know, it's just... And it's he cool. was a black metal guy as well. Yeah, he or, was. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah. But if you notice, like, Primus, they might switch the drummer around. You know, yeah. they might switch from, like, Tim to Brain. Yeah. Um, but they never play without Lur. Oh, no. Lur is Primus, yeah. like Larry Lalonde. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I always respect that kind of behavior. Like when like uh, Rick Allen lost his arm in Def Leppard and the band sure. wasn't like, oh, we need to get a new drummer. They're like, oh, I guess the band's over. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, dude. It's like, we'll just all get new projects because that's not how it works. But, you know, yeah. just, yeah. um, 
<laughs> not that it doesn't work that way, but it just ruins it. You know, yeah. when it's, there's there was a classic lineup, and now there's just like two guys in the band, and it's like, oh, am I really seeing my favorite band, or yeah, is this a, this is a glorified cover band, isn't it? Right. With the original bass player. Yeah. Great. <laughs> How much did I pay to see this? Can you can you imagine like if Claypool? Because didn't he audition for Metallica? He did. He did. Yeah. Like I can't imagine, dude. Like that dude being in Metal like. <laughs> I just like picture like them like in their auditioning rooms like, Les, you got any new riffs, man? Well, I'm thinking about the here. Check this out. Boom, 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 boom. What do you guys think? <laughs> thinking about calling this brown couch? You know? Yeah. All right, you gotta fucking go, dude. Yeah, they're like <laughs> we can't work with this fucking guy. Yeah, dude. Like, they all grew up together. Oh, that's right. They were so. Did they go like, to high school together? Les used to like buy weed from Kirk Hammett. And, no shit. Yeah, they were all buddies, and they were like, wow. "You're an awesome bass player." And he shows up, and he's just like, "Yeah, I mean, obviously you're an awesome bass player." Yeah. But we're a metal band, Les. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, well, I could be metal too, guys. Come on, yeah. give me a chance. And uh, and, and, and so grateful that that happened because yeah. I mean, could you imagine if he was just wasted as a bass player for Metallica? Not that the yeah. That yeah. Robert Trujillo and Cliff Burton and Jason Newstead aren't amazing dudes. Right. Uh, you know, I know all their names, right? Like, yeah. that's a sweet spot to play bass in. Sure. Les is just a god, though. Yeah, and, dude. like, all the cool shit he's done. Yeah. Um, like, Duo de Twang with Tom Waits. Oh, like, She yeah. was amazing. Right, uh, and yeah. now he's doing um, the, uh, the Lynn and Claypool Delirium. Yeah. Dude. Was, is it cool? Oh, it's the best. Yeah. It's the best. He usually doesn't do a second album. And he oh, just shit. released their second album, and they've been touring again. Like you know, normally it's like, oh, I'm gonna do side project, and then they yeah. do an album, and then they do a tour, maybe you know a little bit extended tour. Yeah. And he goes back to Primus, and then he finds another side project. That's and, crazy. And he man. just does this thing where he just goes out and he's creative, and then he comes back, and then he's, he's keeping busy, yeah. dude. I but, totally. But like to see him go out and do another album, and I think he's gonna do another one. But I mean, it's yeah. John Lennon's son. Right. And and he is incredible. Yeah. He's freaking incredible. Guitar player, right? Yeah, the yeah. guitar player and singer. Okay. And he wears weird hats and fucking glasses too. <laughs> yeah. And uh and yeah. he's got an amazing rig to make sounds out of, just like Les has an amazing rig to make sounds out of. And oh, it's an incredible experience. I think I, might I highly seen, recommend. Yeah, that. I think I've seen like a live YouTube video of of them playing and I saw like Lennon's son, dude. He had like the weird like pilgrim hat with like Lennon's glasses, dude. I'm like, wow, dude, like Oh, this yeah. is some trippy shit, man. Super hippie. He's just a big old hairy fucker, too. He's just beard growing hey in all guys, directions. Hey, guys, I'm thinking about bringing my mom in. What do you guys think? No! No! No, don't, dude. You're going to fucking abolish this, man. Fucking don't. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking fucking about bringing my mom, mom in. in. <laughs> dude. That's so great. No, I bet Liz, Liz is like, no, nah, man, don't do that. Come That's on, not man. happening. No. <laughs> yeah. Hilarious, man. Yes, I mean, and, uh, that's that's my musical influences. <laughs> dude, I wanted to see Primus too, man, because they were when I worked at the Palms, I did like yeah. the special events thing. I saw um, Billy Idol like three times, dude, for free. Yeah, and uh, Primus was coming with Wolf Mother, and I think, uh, yeah, dude, I was like, oh my god, like I gotta work this show, dude, because I love Wolf Mother. Um, yeah, it was Primus, Wolf Mother, and I think the Sword, the Sword, or either either mm -hmm. them or Battles, this band called Battles. Yeah. They were going to play at the Palms, and uh, after this shit fucking happened, dude, I was like, God damn it. Yep. And they just, they postponed it toward, till next year, and the fucking shitty part is, man, they're not even coming here, dude. They're going uh, to California. I'm like, motherfucker, I've always wanted to see Primus, dude. I'm going to California to see him then. Yeah, do it, man. We can road trip. <laughs> Tag along with you, man. Dude, if they're touring, and I go see them. I mean, what yeah. the fuck? I'm, I'm only on this planet for so long. It's True. my favorite band. It's my yeah. favorite band's playing. You yeah. go see your favorite band. Live right. your life. Yeah. It's it's only a couple hundred dollars. Yeah, which is not bad at all, man. Yeah. By the time it's all said and done, you yeah. know, it's worth it. Yeah. And I even I even go as far. I've been uh, although I've been kind of slacking because I've been to so many of them. Like I kind of skipped the opener. Yeah. And which is a dick move. You should go see the opener and support the sure. opener. They need you. They need you there more than <laughs> anybody needs you there. Right. <laughs> um. But yeah, I I I've been like just going. Uh, I'll like call one of my buddies that's working the show, and yeah. I'll just be like, uh, "What time is?" Less coming. <laughs> oh no shit! <laughs> yeah, it's like I don't he's care. scheduled to go on at uh you know nine thirty or whatever yeah. eight thirty, and I'll be like, okay, I'll yeah. be there then. Oh, dude, we've all been there, man. I used to, yeah, with my several projects I've been in, man, we've been openers, and we only had like five or six people, and I feel their pain, dude. It's Rocket. just like 
Yeah, man. Like I just like I go all out regardless, dude. When I'm on that stage, fucking that's what you're there for. Balls to the wall, man. You know, and it's just like for like bands like let's say like Tool, they had an opener, dude, and like that guy like didn't really have that much support because people were like, oh, I don't give a shit about this guy. Yeah. Whatever. I'm just waiting for Tool, the main act. It's like, dude, no. Like this guy, you have to understand. He had he had the opportunity to open up for these guys, man. Like yeah. no one gets that opportunity hardly ever, dude. There, you know, yeah, and, there isn't tool if no one's hanging out watching the openers. Exactly, like we dude. were literally just talking about this with Avron, right? He yeah. was saying like tool was opening up for green jelly and yeah. then like coming and doing the green jelly thing with them. And I didn't even know that. And, uh, uh, and it's like, everybody has to start somewhere. You right. know? And if you're not seeing the band opening up for green jelly, yeah. you're missing a tool concert exactly. that you didn't yeah. know was going to even be this epic thing. Yeah. And it's like, you should just support those dudes. Exactly. They, they need it. They right. need it. Right. And yeah. tool like, dude, like the bigger names, they're good, man. Like they oh, yeah. paid their dues. Like they're fucking set, man. Like, other upcoming acts, dude. It's just like just support, man. You gotta even like local bands too, dude. Like big time with local bands. Big time, man. It's just they like, need it more than anybody does. Yeah, that's where, like, when you're a local band and you're inviting all your friends to the club, it's like you need to prove to the club right. owner that you're worth <clears throat> paying money because look at all these people you brought. When we play, yeah, you know, as a local act, we bring fifty people or whatever, right? And that's a big deal in a local scene, man. Like fifty freaking people. Yeah. Um, it's 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 nothing to scoff at. Yeah, uh, right. it might not be the 300 or whatever that the the touring act that's coming through that club is bringing, or sure. you know the two three thousand if it's you know it's a bigger event a bigger yeah. venue, but it's but it's it's a draw exactly, and it's a consistent man. draw. Yep. Then people can start climbing that ladder faster. Right. And it just yeah, but it, without it, they're just stuck. Yeah. They have and, no ground to fight with. Yeah, and back back in Ohio when I used to live there, man, like. The problem was with, like, some certain venues, they are like, okay, like, you want to play here, you got to sell tickets, dude. Yeah. You got to sell tickets. It's like, uh, like, that's They got to the keep hardest. the power and lights on. Yeah, true. But it's like, that's, like, the hardest thing, though, man, because, like, we've tried, like, mm -hmm. numerous times to, like, hey, go to the show. Like, there's a lot of, like, four bands, kick-ass bands playing. I know it's 15 bucks, but would you rather pay 15 with a ticket or 20 at the door, dude. Come on, yeah. you do the math, man. And not even that, dude. Like, it's just hard to get people out to go to shows anymore, dude. Yeah. You know, back then. I this mean, is uh, this is actually something we've talked about before as well, where yeah. people are so comfortable and yeah. so, um, like, they're, they socialize online yeah. and they go count it, right. you know? And it's like, no, that's not socializing. Yeah. That is not... Liking someone's post right. is that does not make them your friend, and you're not that is not friend behavior. I mean, sure. it's friend behavior if you call them and say, "Hey, cool fucking stuff," you mm -hmm. know. I'm glad you're doing some new things with your whatever, yeah. you know, like your band. Right. Uh, but but it's like uh, it's not enough support no, for people. Not, you, know, you got to be there for your friends. Exactly. And some people are stuck in this. Um, they can just. They can just be at home on their couch, safe and sound. Yep. And they can just be on Facebook and support just from a watch distance. The live like video, man. No one's winning when people are doing that. Yeah. No one's no one's getting further that's, when people are doing that. And that's just taking away like the beauty of going to a show, man. It's like, yeah, it's like convenient for you, like to see like a live show on your phone. Like, oh, cool. That's my friend Jeff on guitar and yeah. Terry on bass and Burr. It, you know, it's just like that's cool and all, man. But like. There's just something about going to a show and just, like, escaping from all the bullshit and just, like, seeing, like, this shit happening, dude. I, you know, I don't know. Especially with, like, this shit going on right now, like, I really hope that's not the future where it's just, like, oh, shows are going to be live. You know, like, what they're doing with, like, sports and stuff, man. Like, I've been seeing, like, baseball games and shit where the teams are playing and the, the fucking arena is just empty with seats, man. Yeah. It's just, like, I hope we don't go down that path, dude. I really don't. Well, it's um, it's a lot of people are already geared up for it. Yeah. I it, yeah. There's a lot of people geared up for it. Um, I've been to several little streaming areas now, and um, and they're just moving it the fuck forward. I mean, no one's making any money. Yeah. But this is what we do for a living. Sure. This is how we've always. This is what we've always done. Kind of mm -hmm. thing, you know, like 
nobody just stumbled into the music industry and has a job in it. And like, right. we all killed ourselves to get here. Yeah, you know, and, absolutely, man. And so people are just dedicated and they're just, you know, who cares if I'm making money? I'm still mixing bands, right? I'm right. still, you know, yeah. s- doing lights. I'm still doing video stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, it's important to them and it's important in general to us. Like arts are everything, man. Exactly, man. What is this world without the arts? And what's the purpose man. of being here without being exactly. creative and, and coming up with infinite possibilities of yeah. artistic expression on this, you know, in this if, physical world. If there was no art or entertainment, man, I don't know if I would be here. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> be like millions of people, what man. Are we just doing? Like, you need that, you yeah. know? Um, but yeah, dude, it's just like, it's a weird uh, time for sure. And technology is, advanced super quick man it's just like gonna get faster yeah and like studios are like going out of business and like it's a shame dude because like i loved like going to recording studios i've been to like numerous ones like one in ohio especially uh john curley he's a bass player for the african wigs my first band recorded there man and there's just like we all just like jammed out in a room all recording like there's just something about that that's just like that's fucking awesome. We accomplished that together, but nowadays it's like you just go to someone, you know, someone's pad, and it's just like, oh, <laughs> doing a home studio, man. That's it's what it is now. Weird transition, man. Yeah, you know, and I, it's a. Uh... You can definitely tell the difference between the home studio vibe versus versus going to somewhere where all the wood is specifically selected for its acoustic presence. And it's like yeah. uh, there's no 90 degree angles in the room, that kind of stuff. You know, someone went through right. and gave a lot of love to the room. Yeah. They give a lot of love to the instrumentations. They have nice mics and nice pre's and nice crossover or nice converters. And uh, yeah, there's a huge difference to that. And like going in and hooking up to someone's USB interface right and uh, it's it's just night and day and uh, and the quality you get at the other end of it is uh yeah also night and day i guess right it's yeah, it's man. it's be- it's beautiful whenever you hear yeah all of that sound that mm-hmm. really nice room in the woods and the timbers of everything all together sure. it's it's a beautiful beautiful thing compared to like a 441 right track you know on it on a fucking laptop yeah you recorded with an sm57 real quick yeah yeah and that's there's, a there's no comparison that's a thing too man like my buddy paul he was actually in town for a little bit he's like getting into like recording and all that stuff and he's got like all the software and all that and he's like dude i can run you through a mesa boogie through my laptop man like yeah. and it's just like i'd rather have the real thing man you know to be honest like because I, I get it, it's convenient you know but at the oh, same yeah. time like I love having the actual thing, man, you know, versus like, I can just plug it in. It sounds exactly the same thing, man. Yeah. But I mean, to me, it, it doesn't though. You know well, what it's I mean? not. I, I, I used to think that as well, where I was like, oh man, it comes out of these little speakers sounding like a Mesa boogie. Right. But all the things you're missing, uh, you know, are the air right. and the room, like I was talking about and the speaker noise and yeah. like actual air getting pushed through the diaphragm of a microphone, getting converted to voltage. Yeah. That kind of stuff is important. And then what, right. are, you know, what's the, what tubes are you running that voltage through before you record it? Right. Yeah. And, and you know, what are you recording it to? What bit rate, uh, bit depth are you in sample rate are you recording? Uh, the, all these things are really important. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the less you spend, <laughs> Yeah. On every single one of these things, right? Yeah. The sound uh, inherently loses its its beautiful timbre. It's the way it, the the way it sounds. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's 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 a give and take. Yeah, At the same time, it's sure. like oh, I came up with this idea. Right. And I would like to get it laid out real quick. Mm-hmm. And I have some digital drums and some yeah. some amp simulators. Yeah. And it's like fuck an hour later, I'm done. I'm, look at this play and it's a song that's it yeah but it's like oh man like that's a great advantage yeah. but it's like okay now that we have this hmm. let's go spend right. x amount of dollars per <laughs> yeah. song you know maybe yeah. a couple grand a song dude that's crazy man and Just, uh and lay it out right yeah and that's that's the thing too man like for oh my god like with bakers um we have this one guy that's like hitting us up it's like hey i forget his name uh his last name's Star. I think it's like Mark Star, Mike Star, something like that. Yeah. There's a, a lot of Mike Stars. There's a lot <laughs> There's a lot of people with the last name Star, man. But yeah. uh yeah, he hit us up, man. He's like, Hey man, like I really guys like your sound, you know, come to my studio, we can record a single, I'll play the drums on it. And the dude's like charging like 
two or three thousand dollars, dude, just for one song. Yeah, that's crazy, man. What like, is it? I mean, it, to <laughs> me, to well, to us, dude, it's just like, man, we don't have that kind of money, dude. Yeah, that's not the fun. level you're at. Yeah, you, it's you know? not. You know, and I mean, I'm not trying to be rude or anything. Oh no, yeah, no, but good. there's like, there's extravagant amounts of money being thrown around at the high end of this thing sure but that money needs to be recouped at some point and when they're going around right. spending you know uh, spend money twelve thousand dollars on a sony microphone for yeah. instance you know it's like yeah okay well how am i gonna get that 12 grand back that was one microphone right. and uh you know, you spend five thousand dollars on on converters, right? And, and and it's just like, fuck, man, this is adding up fast. And all of a sudden, yeah. you know, you're a couple hundred thousand dollars in, in after you pit. do the acoustic treatments. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe even like some studios, if you're throwing in analog equipment now, and you do go like an SSL desk and a fucking uh, yeah. a tape machine, you know, you're now you're in in for a million, <sighs> you know, a yeah. million plus. And uh, so then, when you're walking into a facility that has yeah. over a million dollars worth of equipment that you get to play through. Right. It's like, yeah, I guess two, three thousand dollars a song seems a little fair. Right. <laughs> when, right. You, when you look at it from the pocketbook of the dude who put that studio That's together true. that you're getting the yeah, sounds he's, out of. Yeah, because he's investing all in all of that equipment and stuff, yeah. and it's just like, got to make your money's worth, man. Yeah. If you want the best, like the absolute highest end stuff, and you're running, you know. It, yeah. That's more understandable now, it, man. It's uh, it's gonna cost you money, and but see, right. at that point, you're when you're going to these people, you should already have a label backing you. That's gonna help willing you. to invest the money, yeah, right. Like there's like, or you know, maybe do a. At this point, you can do a GoFundMe and see if you can raise right. fucking fifteen grand real quick or something, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, normally in that situation, it's like a label's got your got you, and they are gonna right. They like the. The album that you guys made in your buddy's fucking house, but they need to sell a real album that sounds fucking awesome. Right. Uh, and and so they'll pay for it, but you owe them. And so until yeah. they recoup their money, you know, and then that fucking game's fun too because, mm -hmm. oh, well, we, okay, so we owe you $25,000 for the record. Well, the record sold 50 grand. Right. Well, yeah, but see, we got our 35 grand out of that. Right. And we took the 15 grand we were going to give you, but you still owe us 10 grand because, you know, yeah. even though the record made, you know, 50 or whatever, we're mm -hmm. keeping the lion's share because we did every, you know, we put the money up and for, it's our song technically yeah. because we own the label and we right. own your band. Yeah. And uh, and so now you're paying them back with whatever they're paying you with. Exactly. And you'll yeah. never get out of that hole. <laughs> but you got a really good sounding album. True. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's a reward, man. But yeah, uh, dude, that that shit it just adds up, man. It's just it's crazy. It's crazy. And then mm -hmm. to me, it's like, man, I mean, in the end, is it really worth it? Like, cause like I, no, nah. That's how I kind of feel about it too, man. It's just like, yeah, yeah. When do you care? Yeah. You know what I mean? It, how much better does it sound? Right. That's really where it comes down exactly, to. Exactly, man. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely, like, nice to appreciate great sound. Yeah. But at the same time, a band is a business. Exactly. And a lot of people lose sight of that, that it's this is a fucking business money game that you're playing. Right. And every dollar you put into the band needs to go back to your pocket twice. Yeah. Or what the fuck are you putting it in there for? Exactly. You know, is this an investment or not? Yeah. And am I investing in my happiness or is this really going to be like a band and we're going to make money and we're going to play for money? Right. Yeah. Uh, so. And that's the thing too with me, man. I was never about the money. And yeah. I've been in several projects where it's always that one guy, dude, that's like, oh, well, how much are we getting paid? Yeah. You know, and this is my songs. Like, I own all these songs. I do this and that. Give me all the profit. I'll leave you guys a couple dollars, whatever. But majority of the profit's going to me. I hate that kind of shit man and i've been in several projects yeah. where it's just like dude this is not no like we're a yeah. band man you got to split it dude you can't just take all the profit man That's it just depends it works it yeah. depends on who it is right like uh we had kill feather on yeah and he does all the music he, he writes everything he mm -hmm. records most of it mm -hmm. you know and he gets players right and in that scenario he's just like no this shit's mine you get 50 bucks a night, you get 50 bucks a night, you get 50 bucks a night, learn these fucking songs. Yeah. Um, I'm not sharing the royalties or nothing. This mm -hmm. is my album. Mm -hmm. 
kind of deal. But then whenever, but he wrote everything, right? That's his, right? If you're in a band yeah. and you guys are hanging around, you know, five of you jamming and you're like, oh, that's a fucking tune and you write an album that way and everybody's like, then it's just like split it evenly. Right. Nobody gets a lion's share of any of that shit. Yeah. And like anytime I'm doing that, anytime I'm in a collaborative project now, that's the deal. Right. It's either split evenly or I'm fucking out of here. Yeah. yeah and because uh, I'm not going to waste my time if I'm not going to get paid. Sure. <laughs> sure, man. No, it's. Yeah. yeah but because uh, I, I mean, not playing someone else's music. Right. If it's my music, it's a different story. Exactly, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I see it from that point, And uh, I just, I never would have thought. I was like, oh. I don't. I never want to be in a cover band, man. I just get more yeah. out of it as an original artist, you know. And uh, cover bands, dude, it's just like it's cool at first, yeah, you know. But at the same time, it's like, man, like this is kind of lame. It just gets like old super quick. I was in a yeah. cover band out here for a little bit, man, and it was cool. Like I got one good paying gig. Nice. And that was it, man. That was like five hundred bucks just for me. Oh, wow. Yeah, I had a private gig. It was at the um, Flamingo, some private party. There was, like, a bunch of, like, celebrities there and shit. And it was just like, oh, that's kind of cool. But towards the end of the day, it's like, I'm not getting recognized for, like, my own shit. Like, I'm getting recognized to play. Like, oh, you were that dude that played that Skinner song, weren't you? Yeah. Sweet Home Alabama. Yep. You shredded. And I just can't do it, man. I just I don't want to be known as that guy that plays... Eric Clapton, fucking cocaine shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, totally. I don't know. It's just I feel like some people just get wrapped up in that. It's like, yep, there's nothing wrong with that. But no, not at all, especially if you're getting paid $500 a gig. <laughs> That's once in a lifetime, man. No, yeah, it's I not. Just... That's absolutely not once in a lifetime, sir. For, you're just for... not asking for it. Yeah. You're just not that was... asking for it. That's yeah. that's a lesson I learned yeah. uh, the hard way, yeah. which is you just fucking tell people that, no, this band's 2500 bucks. Right. And they go, oh, okay. Yeah. Don't even flinch about it. Right. When you walk up and go, can we please get 50 bucks each? Pretty please, maybe some drinks? Yeah. They go, I'll think about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, but talk with the guys. They dude. still have this. They still have $5,000 yeah. for the band, right. by the way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what you're dealing with, right? They got the, they're throwing a party yeah. and they got five grand to put a band on and yeah. they're going to try to get a band for two grand and put three grand in their pocket. Mm -hmm. And you could walk up and say, we're $5,000. <laughs> oh, shit. You know what I mean? Yep. It's just like, that's. Everybody's got a game going on. Yeah. And until you're really hustling people's and pushing people's buttons and going, see, where's your money? Give me, let me see how much, you know, you got. I'm not that type of guy, man. It's yeah, just you, like, you, oh, you, we're playing a gig? Cool, man. See, exactly. Like, <laughs> and you'll never make fucking <laughs> yeah. money doing that. I know, man. Yeah. When, I, when I was pushing the fucking Cracker Man thing, I was a dick about it. Yeah. I was a fucking dick about it, you know? And I was like, no, man. I mean, I wasn't, I was only asking, we were an original band yeah. bringing like 50 people a night, but I was like, 500 bucks. Yeah. And everyone's like, well, we'll give you drink tickets. We go, nobody drinks, and call me when you got $500. Click. Yeah. And they go, fuck. And yeah. they call me back, and they go, all right, I'll give you 500 bucks. You guys are on TV. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, bitch, I know you got money. <laughs> yeah. But they want to fuck you. Yeah, Because they do. Pe so many yeah. bands, so many musicians don't have the confidence to stand right. up for themselves and yeah. negotiate a fair That's, price. Yeah. And so um, they just get used to lowballing everybody and sure. expect everybody to take the low ball yeah because everybody else doesn't have the balls to stand up for themselves right and you gotta you gotta really tell people to fuck themselves pretty hard because yeah. you just go uh that's, that's not the game i'm playing yeah and um but you know you gotta have confidence in it as well and you gotta bring the people true and you, you know you gotta have you gotta bring the you know you show show up yeah but uh but no you so many people yeah. are fucking that that's, up. That's they, my and weakness. they play for free. Yeah. Don't ever play for free. Right. Why would you play for free? No. See, like that that's from for me, dude. Like if it's not payment, like money, like at least like free drinks or something, man. Let's get something out of it. Like yeah. you know what I mean? But like we with Bakers, like we done several gigs where it's like we didn't get anything, man. You know, it's just like why do we even fucking do that in the first place, you know? Yeah. Um but yeah, that's the thing with me, man. It's just like I need more confidence in myself, dude. I just, like, I beat myself up a lot, you know? And uh, it's it sucks. Because, like, I want to be that fucking guy that's like, no, we're playing for fucking 500 a man. Yeah. It's either that or nothing. Fake you know it until you make it. Just be that guy. Yeah. And be willing to walk away. To to be to actually win in negotiations, you got to be willing to walk away from the table. Yeah. If you're not, if you're not 100% yeah. down to walk away yeah. and you're not uh, projecting that, 
confidence right. that I'm fucking out of here. I mean, I don't even know what I'm still doing here. Right. Talking to you. You're wasting my fucking time. I got $500 just down the street waiting for me. They'll right. fucking pay me. Yeah. They'll fucking pay me. Yeah. I'm out of here, you know? Yeah. And they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. I was just trying to, I was just trying to save some money. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. And it's like, there you go. You yeah. know, you win the, you win the fucking negotiation that way. Yeah. But unless you're willing to walk away, you're never yeah. going to win a single negotiation you fucking ever get into. No. And you have to walk away. Yeah. You have to go, I don't need that. I don't right. need anything at all at yeah. this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a double-edged sword, man. I mean, it's like I... You will play less shows. That's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I won't, I won't name the venue, but there's been a couple times where this venue that we've played at hasn't paid us like three or four times. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing, man? Like, are we just like... Yeah, don't play there ever again. Yeah, and I told the dudes this. I'm like, dude, like, never. Let's just stop. Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I, I get it. Like, some bands want us to play with them but dude sometimes you got to say no man you yeah. know and uh i don't know you just learn from it man yeah yeah that's uh yeah it's uh it's hard it's hard booking your yeah. band and, and sure. uh it's hard asking people for money i right. get that but you have to you have to yeah you just can't you just can't fuck every because what you're doing is you're setting a precedent for everybody else too right yeah uh, as a musician going around playing all these gigs for free, now everybody expects it for free. Yeah. Well, I can get such and such band. They come here every Friday. Yeah. They never ask me for money. Right. Bands just oh, get so used well, to it, for them. man. Yeah. yeah. You know. But I'm asking for money. Right. <laughs> right? Got, this is my profession, man. Like, I got to, yeah. this is what I'm good at, dude. You know, and I don't know. That's just the... uh that's the that's the sad part, man. Just, people just get so used to like, oh, we're not getting paid. I'm just gonna play like for an hour, you know. It's mm. just like, no, man. Like, it's not just an hour, by the way. It's like two hours or like whatever. Whatever, man. It's like yeah. you got packing your shit up and then driving to the gig and then right. waiting around for everybody else and then sound checking and then okay, now it's like even if you get a sound check, but then you're like, you're fucking hanging out yeah. the, all night basically. You tear yeah. all your shit down, load it in the truck. I mean, yeah. You know, what time did you pack your stuff it's, up? What time are you out of the club? Right. And that's how long it actually is. Yeah. You know, say you pack your stuff up at 6 p.m. at the <laughs> latest. Right. And you know, I'd yeah. be packed the fucking day before. But, you know, and you're leaving your house, and then you get home at, like, midnight. I mean, you just work six hours. Yeah. What the fuck is your compensation for that? Right. You know, the bar, the bar made money. Yeah. They sold drinks. Yeah. They sold tickets. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they're opening their establishment and profiting because yeah. you're there playing. Right. And I... So a lot of people don't recognize that, man. It's like, man, the musicians have to go through like shit, dude. Like, we mm -hmm. got to pack up the gear. We got to be there at a certain time. We got to do sound check. We got to hang around till whenever time we go on, yeah. you know. And a lot of people don't really uh, grasp on that, man. It's just like, man, like they don't think about like, okay, they got to lug their own shit. They don't have their own crews like helping them, their own techs or anything like that, man. It's like it's all on them, dude. Yeah, it's you not know? easy. No, it's not. And for <laughs> A while, dude. You just get like, kind of like, man, I'm fucking sick of this shit, dude. I don't want to fucking wrap these cables and put my pedal boards away and, you know, uh, unplug everything, man. It's just like, fuck. Like, it just gets tiring for a little bit. Yeah, it it gets yeah. old fucking fast, bro. I I got sick of the bullshit really fast. And that's yeah. why I became an audio engineer. Honestly, I was yeah. just like, this is dumb. Yeah, this is a dumb game we're playing. And then I got back yeah. into it, and it's just, it was the same thing as like whenever I went corporate from being a musician to being a corporate guy i was like well sure. this is how much money i need yeah right yeah. like am i gonna make this much money right and they're uh, otherwise i'm not interested right i'll just keep yeah. doing what i'm doing mm -hmm. and when you're in that position that's the best position to be in mm -hmm. because you have all the power you're just right. like no i'm good yeah i'm good not doing your thing yeah if you want me to do your thing for you sure what's in it for me right because i'm great exactly. over here fucking around with bands right or mm -hmm. same with like the you know the band thing it was just like well we're gonna make money right like i'm not gonna take days off of work and miss out on other money to go not make money with you yeah F fuck me right like <laughs> yeah well, i don't understand this at no. all this doesn't compute right and uh and so that was always my thing it was just like as long as i'm not robbing peter to pay Paul kind of thing I can perform right. with you but yeah that's why I don't perform with a lot of people 
Yeah, and which th- there's nothing wrong with that, man. You got to do what's best for you. Yeah, that's all it comes down to, man. I'm mostly interested in doing my own thing at this point. Yeah, I got and I got three projects that are up wow. in the air that yeah. are not doing anything right now because there's nowhere to play. So I'm just like, I'm not practicing. Are you still doing the uh, the uh, Primus tribute or no? Yeah. Oh no, shit! You guys are. I oh. am gonna bring it back whenever shit happens. Yeah, you know, I'll <laughs> be like, be... oh, cool. I'll practice yeah. my set for a month or two and call the yeah. guys and be like, hey, I got us a gig. It's paying, and yeah, you know, because that's the Primus gig is not a fuck around at all. It's oh, like, sure. no, I'm paying my fucking guys. Yeah. You know, these are professional musicians that right. play Primus. They're not. Yeah, they don't just fuck around. They're not. They don't half ass. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. It's not like that. This isn't no. just a for fun thing. For me, it's a. It's a. It is fun. It is fun, but it's more like. Um, it's more like, a, let me see if I can do this, yeah. right? It's a challenge. It's a huge challenge oh, because sure, that's way higher level bass playing and singing than I should be playing at, honestly, yeah. especially for how much I practice, which is like not yeah. a lot at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's so that for me is like, ah, oh, sweet. I get to go out and challenge myself yeah. and try to perform this insane level of performance. Yeah. Um, and but so I don't care if I'm playing to anybody. Right. personally but I'm, me too. at the same time it's like when i'm booking it it's like i have to pay these guys and i'm gonna pay my fucking self you yeah. know and um and you know we are at the point where we're bringing uh an engineer as well hmm. so it's like i gotta pay that fucking guy which is my brother <laughs> oh it's no oh shit yeah wow and uh and so it's yeah it, it's it'll come back um I, yeah i was you know i was just gonna do some of the like Talk to some of the House of Blues people and the Stations Casino people. They're all doing uh, tribute band circuits regularly, and just jump on the loop with them. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, it's it's not that that hard of a thing to uh, make happen now that I got guys that can do it. It's just like a phone call and a set list away at any point. Right. But the same guys like Anthony who plays guitar in the Primus band, uh, we've been doing. We were, were fucking around, doing. We haven't done it in a while. Uh, we were we were messing around with a band uh, where it was completely open genre, mm-hmm. open ended on everything. Yeah, uh, and it was just jam band stuff where we would get together with Michael Masonette and uh, and just like he'd start a beat, and Anthony and I'd start jamming, and we just groove. Anthony and I learned how to play together, so yeah, um, we've always just been able to instantly play and. He might clicks with both of us. That's awesome. So we like do a live jam for like ninety minutes. No shit. And yeah. then um, so we had like four or five of these sessions where mm-hmm. we live jam for like ninety minutes, or we multi track the whole thing. Yeah. And then we chop it up into like this is a song. This could be a the chorus to that song, and then like, but yeah. it's all stuff that we just wrote free flowing with each other. Right. And then we can polish it up and, and totally twist it into whatever we want to twist it into. But it's like, sure. at that point, no one person can say, oh, I wrote that. Yeah. No, we all wrote it. We were yeah. all in the same room when it got written. Jamming. Right. You know, so. Yeah, man. And no one's, and like the other thing I like about it is uh, there's no conflict. It's like. That's if, cool. Um, you know, because Anthony and I will be swapping vocals. Sure. And whatever was required yeah. kind of thing. And so it's like, if you want to play it, I'll play it. Right. I have no opinion on it. If if you that's what if that's what Anthony wants to do yeah. and he wants to sing and, and jam a song yeah. uh, in that band then yeah, we're doing it. I right. mean, there's no there's no opinions about yeah. that kind of thing. If I want to do something, they're just like, yeah, sure, we'll learn it. Whatever, yeah. you know. That was how the uh, the ACDC, man. It was like cuz walking in there, I was like, oh yeah, I already know majority of these songs, man, but like Ryan the drummer, he was like, no nah, man, like he was this on top band. of it, dude. Yeah, like, he was like, nah, like, Angus played it this way. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to learn lick for lick, dude. Like, just perfection, dude. Like, because it's not, you can't do it your own, man. Yeah. You got to play it how exactly it is, man. And that's that's some of the problems with some of these tribute bands. They like to add their own flair to it. It's like, dude, no, you got to play it the way that's written out, dude. Yeah. You can't just, like, oh, check out Greg's lick. Woo! Tap. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, man, Angus didn't tap for, you know... Come on, bro. Like you got to play it how it's written, dude. Yeah. Maybe so dance. that was what uh, that was what was happening with uh, the Primus band. I had uh, two guitar players before mm-hmm. that were fantastic guitar players, yeah. and uh, they but they were like you know they were just learning the key riffs and then soloing because it's like 
fuck, man, we're playing 90 minutes of Primus. I, like, it's yeah. a lot to learn those guitar solos and learn all these intricate lead parts and stuff. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that's cool. I mean, yeah, you're jamming with me and I'm having yeah. fun. It's fucking great. And, you know, it's not like what they were doing sounded bad or anything. It sounded awesome. They were right. great guitar players. Mm -hmm. But then after uh, we cycled into Anthony and he learned every note, note for note, uh, I was like, oh, damn, that is, uh, that tied it all together real nice. Like it, it made all the difference in the world from, from being, you know, uh, having fun jamming Primus band mm -hmm. to a well-oiled machine fucking pumping these songs out polished like they're supposed yeah. to sound. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it is night and day. It is night and day. And I, I love the old videos. Like, uh, I, I've recorded all the Primus shows as part of my thing, right? Like, I, That's cool, man. I'm obsessive about the tech end of things, so I'm yeah. always multi-tracking it, multi-cameras. Mm -hmm. This is my baby, you know? I'm like, I'm having fun. This is me living right. life. For me, yeah. it's not just learning the songs. It's it's editing the videos afterwards and mixing yeah. the tracks. And I'm, I'm an, I am I'm I like all of it, so I yeah. do all of it. And uh, that's cool too, man. Yeah. I mean, you get to be your your idol too, man, which is right. great too, man. I mean, it's like that's, dude. Kudos to you, man. Like, cause being Les Claypool, like I can't imagine just like learning those crazy parts and singing at the same time, it's dude. Hard. I'm sure, man. And I like that though. That's the challenges, man. With Angus, dude. Like, I you know it was like second nature to me because like I that was my beginning, dude. That was yeah. like learning all the ACDC shit. It's just like three chords and then it, but people are like oh it's easy it's a c d you know it's easy shit it's like dude no it's not once you like dig deeper into yeah. like their parts it's some technical shit man oh yeah especially you the know? guitar solo stuff man oh dude like i had to like night and day just like fuck what's that fucking thing he's playing man because like he would angus would like hide some like parts where it's just like he sneaks up like oh check out this lick you don't you barely hear it dude it's like you know i had to like spend hours like trying to fucking figure out and I get frustrated it's like fuck need a minute need a fucking minute Angus you're a guitar wizard I get it I'm fucking trying to get to your level bro just give me time yeah um, but with high voltage man like Ryan was just like on keen with that it's like dude no you gotta play it the way he fucking played it I'm like dude I, I'm i getting there <laughs> just hold on <laughs> and I, I love it too because the Malcolm Young of that band like I forget his name dude there's so many like players that came and went mm -hmm. through that band um and there was one time it's like oh no man angus doesn't play it like that he plays it like this i'm like dude you're not fucking angus man you're malcolm focus on the there's always that one guy that dude it's like no bro no like and hell's bells recording four like he angus plays it this way his vibrato's down this this way on the third fret it's like no bro focus fucking focus on you Jeez. man I would get pressure from that band, dude, a lot of the times. Yeah, and I honestly. try not to be that way, man. Like, that's yeah. why I was, like, not com like not bitching at my fucking other homies that were playing yeah. guitar or anything, because I was like, man, it sounds good. We're having fun, right? right? Everyone's having fun? Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. You know, like, that's, let's just fucking jam this thing then. And, yeah. um, because then, then, you know, if you're not having a good time playing music, what then do you, why even do it, man? What are you doing you're just this for? Wasting the time. Yeah. You know? You know, I, I started this whole thing because it looked like a good time. I saw people right. on stage fucking jamming, and I was like, that looks awesome. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, if it turns into anything that, like, starts getting negative or going downhill, and it's just like, I'm <laughs> it's, off this fucking ugly, train. Man. Yeah, I've been here before. Yeah. Fucking out of here, man. Yeah. You know, because yeah. it's like, it's not worth it. It's no. not worth it to go into that fucking downward spiral that yeah. eventually is going to happen yeah you know it's always happened to fucking every band i've been in yeah uh yeah besides the primus thing because there's no pressure on the primus thing <laughs> right because you're yeah yeah I, I, I won't do it i won't do it and i call yeah. the guys and i say what songs do you want to play mm. a lot of times they go, oh, i don't give a fuck yeah. sometimes they're like oh i was i was jamming on this one and i'll be like all right we'll learn that and yeah and then here's like a primus set that i mixed up and yeah you guys all good with that we'll go what's and, your favorite song to play as far as primus dude Mm, Herald of the Rocks, I want to oh, say. What? That song right. is incredible. Yeah. It yeah. goes all over the place. I mean, yeah. it's just up and down, and like the verse. That's a great song. Is man. an obscure oddity of a verse where it's just like, dun, 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 you know, and it yeah. stops and it keeps stopping in the middle of the verse. And then the end's just this enormous solo free for all. Yeah. That's like a well 
put together piece though it's mm -hmm. not it seems like chaos has ensued right. when you're just listening to it from a distance but when you're playing it with your buddies it's like this thing is beautiful look at that and uh and so we nail it like we really want to yeah. we really want that end piece to be fucking on point sure yeah. and you can get lost in it right like if you're not looking at each other yeah counting and like giving you got to give each other signals too it's like yeah and we're coming up to the fucking break change and you look at the drummer <laughs> and we make eye contact and he goes yeah we're doing that bam <laughs> and you jump Magic out of it happening. yeah, yeah it's yeah. so great because you're like yeah even with uh, sometimes you will free free form a little bit, right? right Some parts sure. we just go fucking fuck around yeah. until uh, one of you guys, you know, one of us will call it. Whoever's like in the yeah. middle of something, they'll they'll start nodding their head and start eyeballing people. Yo, like this yeah. right now, this we're going, going up, back. Dude. Yeah. Uh, and we'd be like, all right, front four, let's go back. That shit. Yeah. So Harold's a great song for that kind of stuff. Or like yeah. Southbound Pachyderm, also oh, a great man. song for that because yeah. it's just, yeah. you can dive in and out of Southbound sure. and other stuff. And then you can also just, just cruise. You can play the song. Like they play it for 12 minutes usually <laughs> when they play Southbound Pachyderm. Yeah. And I think on that record, it's like a six, seven minute song or something. It's like oh, really so, long song anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, stuff like that though, like, yeah. cause you get lost in those moments, and that's sure. what I really love. And like, yeah. I'm firing on all cylinders. I'm just trying to fucking keep up with Les's insane solos that he's doing. Yeah, and uh, and maybe singing some crazy parts. Yeah. And like, we're all just, yeah, Harold, Harold. I, I over explained that way too oh, much. Oh man, no, that's cool, man. Yeah, no, I, I love long format this kind of podcast, stuff, right? So I can yeah. talk as enough. Yeah, that's why I'm, I like doing it. I like um, to talk, obviously. What kind of bass does Les play, dude? I've is oh, it he a, he plays uh, Carl Thompson's. Oh shit, that's right. Yeah, okay. yeah. I'll yeah. pull up a picture of him for the uh, the people at home. Carl Thompson basses are amazing. They are like ten, fifteen thousand dollars an instrument. <laughs> that's why I don't have one. Yeah. Uh, but they're considered by a lot of people to be, um, wow, you know, yeah. some of the nicest bases out there. They're all custom made. They're all handmade. Um, let's see here. Let's look up some six strings. Uh, definitely some Les Claypool stuff in there. Yeah. See, look at that gorgeous stuff. Gorgeous stuff. What do we got? See, see, yeah, they're obviously, they're all handmade. See, I love stuff like this. Yeah. There's multiple kinds of wood. Oh, that's beautiful, dude. Look at that. So this is the kind of stuff Les plays. Um, wow, this is all 2020 stuff like that. It has per month. Uh, yeah, Carl Thompson. It's beautiful. And he plays through Ampeg. Nice. Um, he uses line six pedals. Oh, uh, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then he does the blue steel strings. Yeah. I have the whole, I have the whole list. I Man. was actually having, um, having a company make a base for me, but, uh, you know, that costs money and things, right? Oh, so, the customization, the type of pickups you want, the yeah. type of wood, that shit just adds up, man. I was like, I want to just design, like, a Carl Thompson base sure. with one of these other companies that can make it for, yeah. like, a quarter of the price right. with the same wood. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I think that's the way to go, too, man, because, like, Tommy told me about this. There's these, like, do-it-yourself guitar kits, bass kits, yeah. all this shit, man. And I'm like, dude, like... It's, it's kind of cool, man. Like, I kind of want to get into that, you know, just, like, create my own acts, dude. Just, like, what's, like, because that shit, man, I mean, kudos to people that do that type of shit, man. Yeah, you it's know, it's smart. just a lot of knowledge of, like, okay, this goes that, this wire goes into that wire. It's, like, I could never. Sure you just, could. Yeah. You I mean, absolutely I could. could. Yeah. Confidence, Like, like I was saying earlier, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. You have a human brain and yep. human hands just like that fucking guy does. Right. All you got to do is commit time and effort, yeah. and you can do anything you want in this fucking life, man. Yeah. There's no stopping you from doing anything any other human does. Yeah. And you just They just practiced a lot. Yeah. They did it a lot. That's why they're good at it. You know, like, I'm sure Carl Thompson's been building bases for, like, 40 for years. years. Yeah. yeah. You know, after four decades of doing the same thing, you get kind of good at it. Right. You know, but standing there, uh, and you've been doing it for 10 days, and you're uh. like, Fuck! I'm not as good as this guy that's been doing it for ten years, and it's like no shit. Right? Because why would you be? That would be a shame to the guy that's been trying for ten years, right? right. That you all of a sudden get to do it in ten days. It's not yeah. how it fucking works. No, it's not how reality works. But you can get there. Right. But and it's gonna take you ten years too. Yeah. Because you're stuck in the same human body that guy was in. Yeah, that's the same. That's the thing with people too, man. It's like that's the downfall of 
people they just don't want to put the time into like practicing to get to that level as like all these yeah. pros and all that shit man people it always wanna... seem so out of reach yeah yeah and it's like it's not like you said man it's not you know um nothing is yeah nothing is unless you're trying to set world records Right. <laughs> and even that's not out of reach, man. No. That's not out of reach. Yeah. Like, I want to, like, we're, we're doing some dumb shit, and that's actually one of the stupid things I want to try to do is maybe break some dumbass world records just to yeah. be like, I mean, I practice for, like, a month. Yeah. You know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I just, it's dumb ideas. Like, there's so many, there's, like, uh, I watched a, I, I watched a dumbass show where a guy was, like, uh, just joking and his, his, bodyguard fucking smashed three bananas in 60 seconds what and it was fuck? like the record was two and a half yeah we got a world record yeah. you know like because it's hard to eat that many it's hard to bananas. eat bananas and like oh, get them dude. down yeah so like, you're like three i could eat more than that and you yeah. start chewing on the first one you're like yeah. fuck has it been 25 seconds or <laughs> yeah you just you know? gotta <laughs> you gotta shove that whole thing in man. yeah dude that's it's harder than it looks oh dude there's this one guy i think uh what's his name Oh, he's known as the L.A. Beast, bro. Oh, yeah? On YouTube. Check this guy out, man. Uh, he does <laughs> some of the grossest shit with food, man. It's like he, uh, there's this one video. He, I think he drank like a whole fucking, it's like three or four gallons of just straight up lime juice, dude. Yeah, just like he had like over 150 limes and fucking squeezed like all this juice and like just fucking, um, it's disgusting, man. He did like a hundred raw eggs challenge. A hundred raw eggs? Yeah, dude. That's he, so gross. He just puked all over everybody. <laughs> yeah. Of course. He even said like in the beginning of the video, man, it's like, warning, <laughs> vomiting might occur. <laughs> just Duh. so you know. Yeah. If you're eating like that, you're going to pee. I'm going to chug a gallon of milk. I oh, might dude. throw up. Yeah, no, dude. No, he's bro, just, you're puking everywhere. Yeah. he. I don't know. He just challenges himself, man. It's just like, but dude, you're just putting all this like garbage into your body man you're not gonna last long dude like, right yeah but you gotta LA you Beast, gotta throw man. that shit up afterwards <laughs> like all these people that do uh yeah. what's the the fucking guy that goes around and eats all those crazy dishes the big ass fucking meals oh the, um he he's gotta puke that shit up i hear like he can't just eat like that no. over and over and, just, and over like, and be settled like they that. have a season to shoot you know what I mean? It's right. not like he can do one every couple of weeks and let right. his body recover from that style of eating. It's yeah. like, no, if he kept doing that and they shot a season and, you know, yeah. 20 episodes or whatever yeah. for a month, you know, he's yeah. just like every day he's fucking putting that. <laughs> his, that dude's yeah. dying, man. Oh, dude, There's slowly no way. but surely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fucked. He's fucked. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, what happens off camera is equally important, I guess. Right. But fucking, uh, and speaking about eating. What have you been, uh, what have you put in your body? Because I know you we were talking about uh, wanting to talk about workout foods and healthy foods. and Sure, man. Yeah, I'm actually getting into, uh, I really love Greek yogurt, dude. I do too. I just uh, had a bunch yesterday. Chobani uh, Greek yogurt. I think it's vanilla. Yeah. That shit's my jam. And then uh, there's this stuff called uh, Greek Gods. Dude, honey flavored yogurt, dude. Well, mm. It's fucking with walnuts, bro. And blueberries. Yeah. Forget it, dude. Like... I've been getting into like more of that, uh, just like hard boiled eggs. I love hard boiled eggs, dude. Me too. I do like. How many do you do? Like usually, like, I'll do like a half a dozen, and oh, then wow. um, yeah. Well, I mean, just when I'm making or whatever, I make half a dozen and throw yeah. a couple in my ramen for dinner that night and start smashing them through the day. There you go. Maybe like a, a hard boiled egg and a fucking half an avocado, avocado, yeah, and like just salt and pepper both those bitches, and you're like. That's it almost it. is like, which one am I eating right now? <laughs> this yeah. is a salt and pepper overwhelm it if you do too much. Yeah, dude. I um, and thank God for my wife, man. She uh, she introduced me to uh, to to ramen. Ramen's good. I love I love comfort food every once in a while, dude. But like shin ramen, I've been doing that. The the yeah. black spicy kind. Oh yeah. Oh, dude. It's like <laughs> that shit will clear your science sinus, sinuses. Excuse me. Um, but yeah, that shit's good. And then uh. I've been doing a lot of salmon burgers, man. Salmon burgers and oh, uh, with quinoa and uh, broccoli, dude. Salmon burgers, huh? Yeah. I haven't tried the salmon burgers. We've been trying to get rid of it. We, uh, we had a bunch of chicken in our freezer, so we're trying to eat. Yeah. Like We're like spacing it out in the week because we've really been trying to go vegetarian. We really like the vegetarian lifestyle that we've been starting. Like, yeah. it's just, this, is, this is month one. We're at the end of it, and it feels great. We're going to definitely keep it up. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you start to eat... Uh, meat again you uh -huh. put meat in your system like once a week and yeah. it's like yeah that fucking slows me down <laughs> yeah you, t you really yeah. take notice to it it's like yeah, you know sure. i have 
I'll do, uh, like I've been doing forever, which is my oatmeal for the morning. Mm-hmm. I do an oatmeal and protein shake every day for like 10 years now, yeah. uh, which is, I highly recommend. It's a great way to start your day. Yeah. And then uh, I've been doing like a bagel or uh, yogurt for lunch. And then nice. we do a vegetarian dish with some rice or something for dinner every night. Mm-hmm. And it's been great. And but we've definitely taken notice. Like yeah. you start putting the meats and the the high fats and stuff in your system. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the body definitely takes a lot more to process that. Like you feel your body processing the food as opposed to just like I put food in my system. I'm not hungry anymore, and it actually tasted really good. By the way, like I like the way that shit tastes. I know. Yeah. I know. Um. A lot of people just go, I could never eat that stuff because it's not yeah. fucking McDonald's or whatever right. excuse they have. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, that's absurd because it's right. fucking delicious. Right. I, I I disagree 100% with the taste <laughs> thing because yeah. once you get away from that high saturated fat, high sugar diet right. where it's just you're just fucking killing yourself and you're filling your blood up and turning your fucking blood veins solid, you know, you stop doing that to yourself. Yeah. And your taste buds aren't just saturated with that for just like a, a week, I, man. I mean, it goes yeah. away so fast. Yeah. Uh, and you just, you start really liking that. Yeah. I really love my, my dude, my yogurt's the, I fucking love yogurt. I yeah. had raspberries and strawberries and granola. Nice. Yesterday, All into big it, old yeah. fucking thing of yogurt. I do a separate yeah. so I can like. Oh get the yogurt and scoop it up and just be right put it all on top and then yeah. it's basically just going in for the fruit that's with some yogurt nice, attached to it you know and that's that's such a good feeling too man a lot of people just get so used to like shitty eating habits man yeah. you know and it's just like just try this out for once and mm-hmm. you like we talked about earlier you feel a difference a world of difference dude so much better you know yeah and like these foods like yeah they're not as filling and not as like satisfying you don't need to be filled exactly that's the thing man yeah yeah that's, like, that's the worst, man. Just like eating like comfort food all the time. It's just like I don't want to fucking do anything, man. I'm just bloated. Yeah, you know, just you're stuck. All that sugar. <laughs> yeah, you get that sugar out of your system. Yeah, and it takes a while, but then you start feeling really, really good. And yeah. you don't, you don't need that sugar, man. You know what I've been doing for a snack is um like if I get a sweet tooth. Yeah. Smoke too much weed at night or something. <laughs> yeah. I'll uh. I'll take some some more some of the rice that we'll make, mm-hmm. uh, and I'll put like you know good size like cup of rice and just fucking honey, maybe a little little oh, bit of butter of, in there, or mix oh, that shit man. up. Yeah. Cause I remember growing up, my mom used to do honey and sugar and yeah. sugar rice. It's just fucking oh, goddamn man. hillbillies. Uh, <laughs> and so I was like, well, instead of putting sugar in my food, mm-hmm. I can do honey, which is a nice natural sweetener. It's delicious, by the way. Like I yeah. I like like it it's not even like oh i guess that'll you know it was that'll satisfy my sweet tooth right but now it's like "Mm, honey and rice that sounds pretty good it's really good i never had it man it's so good yeah Yeah. a little bit of butter just a touch yeah to get it to like kind of be because it's like rice whatever you put on the fucking rice is what the rice tastes like right i mean it's like flavorless bullshit but yeah it's kind of like um like a biscuit, right? You put like a chicken biscuit almost. You put the butter and the honey yeah. on a on the biscuit, and it's just fucking delicious, oh, right? Dude. And yeah. it's the same same kind of flavor you're getting with it. Yeah. With the rice, with the honey, and a little bit of butter. See, I uh, back in Ohio, dude, when I used to live with my grandparents, my mom, uh, my grandfather would always like. <laughs> He would always need a biscuit with applesauce in the middle, dude. That sounds good. And I <laughs> I tried it, man. I don't know what it is, man. Like, yeah. applesauce, just, I can't. I was like, oh, Yeah, I'm not a fan it, of the applesauce either. Yeah, man. It's just like mush, like, in between biscuits. Like, dude, biscuits for me, like, I need it, like, with, like, a little bit of butter, you know, maybe some cinnamon. And yeah. I'm good, man. I'm good. But, like, applesauce, nah, dude. No, it's just straight up mush. It's like, fucking get out of here. <laughs> you know, but... Uh, yeah, I like my apples crispy. Yeah, me too, man. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, as far as foods, man, um, I've just been focusing more on uh, more greens and uh, more uh, fruits and um, quinoa, dude. I love quinoa. I'm obsessed uh, yeah. with it, man. Yeah, my, my girl, she works at Costco and she got like a whole fucking pound of that shit dude so we're good <laughs> i mean it's just like thank god for costco dude and like yeah, 25 Costco's pounds of dope. rice dude and that we're good man and it's good food i like yeah. the stuff that comes from costco yeah. angela bring all kinds of little food dishes and stuff that they have and yeah 
This shit's bomb. Oh, oh, where did you get this from? You get this from Sprouts? She goes, yeah. no, nah, it's from Costco. Yeah, in bulk, <laughs> dude. In bulk. Yeah. Shit, okay. Yeah, it's like 14 packs for 10 bucks, man. Yeah, like, it's so cheap. It's fucking crazy, man. It's so good, too. Yeah. I dig it. I dig it big time. Yeah. I I pay respect to those kind of places, man. Like, yeah. thank God for, like, Sam's Club, Costco, like, dude, like, it just makes me never, ever want to go back to Walmart or, like, no. Smith's, like, fucking, let's just go get bulk, dude. Yeah. See at home. As long as you, you know, most of the frozen foods and stuff that you got, it's fucking the way to do it, man. Yeah. It's definitely the way to do it. Yeah. My uh, my grandparents, they have like, oh, dude, because they like to catch fish a lot. They go out fishing like every weekend, dude. Oh, dope. And uh, yeah, man, they, uh, it's one of the, probably the best fish I've ever had in years, man. Uh, but they catch a lot. And then what they do is like, they have like two to three like freezers man like in their cabin in indiana <laughs> and they just put that shit stockpile that shit it's like oh you want salmon you want fucking trout like we got it all dude like that's genius man like yeah. i want to do something like that down the road where it's just like if we're out of food we have this just right. in case man you know we w- we've been talking about that too my brother and i yeah. um about getting a cabin just up in like Utah or something like that. Keep yeah. a stock, keep a garden going with like automated sprinkler system or whatever. Yeah. And uh, just cruise up there once a month, tend to the fucking place, make sure it's good and yeah. you go fishing or whatever. And oh, dude, just have like a getaway. Right. And you're just like, we go and we there's, can just, we don't even need to bring anything. Right. There's a garden, there's a freezer. Yeah. And it's, we, we'll be fine. There's nothing like it, man. Just like, I see because that's just that's at peace for me man like yeah. going to my grandparents cabin I was like I didn't have to think about anything worry about this or that like I can be at peace dude there's just something like being in the woods in the cabin and just like you know just like hey I'm here I'm at peace <laughs> let's just like chill out man you know absolutely you know that I just I've always I love that kind of environment man I miss nature I miss nature and green yeah for sure I go out all the time. Yeah. And uh, that's one of the things I dig about these these videos, these yoga videos that we're starting to shoot is uh, is that it's an excuse to go out yeah. and, like, shoot in nature. And then I'm capturing time lapses and we're, you know, fucking hanging out and just enjoying the woods and yeah. enjoying the water. And that's it's cool. like, oh, we're here. And yeah. it's, like, it's only, like, half the day is really spent right. focusing on on getting some shots and getting the, the work done. And then the other half of the day, it's like, I mean, you got to still, you know, wake up and do your daily rituals and, and sure. cook yeah. three meals a day. And right. uh, so you got to keep, you can't just like focus like you're on the job or on the clock at work where it's just like, oh, life doesn't matter. I'm just going to fucking get things done. Right. And it's like, no, nah, you still got to exist out there. Yeah. It takes a lot more to exist out there. It's yeah. not like, oh, sandwich. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, someone's got to... <laughs> yeah. Dig in the cooler and put sandwiches mm-hmm. together, yeah. and then wash everything. Right, you know, it's not it's not so convenient out there. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you, it's so it's nice. It's a nice balance where we're still getting stuff done and we're still like we feel accomplished for the day. Yeah. But at the same time, we're out in the middle of nowhere, chilling. Sure. Yeah. And uh, so you guys are doing uh, yoga instruction vi- instructional yeah. videos, right on. Yeah, that's, you... that's what we're doing. Uh, okay. Talking about fucking. Uh, no, we're going out and and, and shooting those. Uh, we shot some stuff out in Arizona. Oh, nice, man. And now we're looking to go shoot another one soon. Um, we just got all of our cool toys. So mm-hmm. the the Arizona shot was really a uh, um, a practice run. Yeah. And now we have all these stabilizers and carbon uh, mechanized slider. So we can get like panoramic shots of, you yeah. know, everything's kind of got a move to it and it looks really That's pro. Cool, yeah. Um, getting our 4K cameras dialed in really nice. Nice. So, um, yeah, so we're trying to shoot, do another shot soon. Um, although it's hot as balls out right now. Oh, in Arizona, for sure. We man. might not, uh, we might wait till September. We might go to like a lake in Utah where it's like maybe 80 degrees in the, at the hottest point in the day, mm-hmm. try to get something something done because I really want to get it up. I want to get it up on the website because uh, it came out pretty good. I mean, I just went up there in my gym clothes and fucked around, but now we have like wardrobe and yeah. we have power. Gen- we have a, a solar powered uh, oh, no way. Uh, battery to nice. charge all of our camera equipment That's in the badass. woods so we can stay multiple days yeah. um, and do multiple takes. And, uh, and we have... Um, and we just got the whole setup. I got a nice, nice 
battery powered like extra large clock so nice. i can i know what the times are right when i'm doing the motions and angela can yeah. film and do all her stuff yeah and because we were up there and i was like i need you to like tell me what time it is because we have no way for me to know how long this is supposed to be a 10 minute yoga video and this right. is supposed to be a you know a, a 15 minute and a, i'm going to do like i'm going to do some small ones first and like 10 15 30 i think maybe 10 20 30 depending on how the lesson feels right we went up there and shot the 10 minute uh practice take yeah and it came out great it that's awesome man. great so uh, yeah it'll be really nice for everybody because there's a lot of a lot of the a lot of people ask me about that, about the yoga, and they want to yeah. learn how to do some basic stretches. You know, they're not trying to be mm -hmm. a fucking dude who can extend their legs out like I can, you know, <laughs> when they're holding, doing a handstand. But yeah. uh, they are interested in taking care of their bodies. Sure. And I am definitely into helping people mm -hmm. help themselves and love themselves. And, yeah. uh, and that's super important. I mean, like I was saying, I spend... I spend every morning on a big routine now that I don't have full-time job or I don't have a job at all. Yeah. Um, not counting this. I mean, I, this is my job now, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, it's like the first six hours of my day are, are self-love. It's like, mm -hmm. like you were saying, two hours reading, two hours workout and, uh, meditation, fucking nice, healthy breakfast. Yeah. And then you start your day. Yeah. You know, six to noon. That's me time. Right. That's, that's all about Jason. Yeah. Fuck, call me. Not interested in anything. I'll call you back. Yeah. After noon. After you do. You yeah. Do after yeah. I've taken care of Jason. Right. The world can. Th yeah. Then I can go, do right by the world properly. Right. Um, which is just part of my discipline that I've been getting into and. Yeah. Trying to be a better person every day because yeah. I, uh. I mean, uh, yeah, I've I've had so many like anger problems, and, and you know, I'm a, I'm a human being. I came into this right. world. There's no rule book. Yeah. And I was just like, well, I'll make my own fucking rules, and I'll do yeah. what feels good. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'll get lost in this material world and sure. get really depressed, and uh -huh. you know, it's like uh, yeah. it, it's it's a big game. So you, it is, man. Until you really um, until you really snap, you know, uh, and like yeah. I had a I had a mental breakdown like a total shit show breakdown at 33 i'm 35 now mm -hmm. and uh and that was like the best thing that ever happened to me like it was just so important in the storyline of my life where i was yeah. like all the way up until that point yeah i was um i was walking around on default i was walking around to sleep mm -hmm. you know I, I was just a functioning goo body you know it was, it, it was just jason and there was no spirituality. There was no uh, meditation practices. There was no right. uh, purity rituals. I, yeah. you know, it was just like, yeah. whatever, man. You know, life's right. a party, and then I'm gonna die, and it's gonna go black. Yeah. And uh, I kept, I kept convincing myself of that bullshit. Yeah. And trying to just be like, oh no, I'm, I'm a realist. I live in the hard real world. Yeah. You know, uh, with science. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, that yeah. just didn't, that just doesn't pan out after a while. No. You know, there's just, there's so much more happening right. than just three, these three dimensions of the material world. Sure. Yeah. And, um, and once, once you snap like that, once yeah. this, this bullshit narrative that you've been lying to yourself about mm -hmm. and telling yourself that your ego is all that there is right and your brain you just satisfy your brain and satisfy your brain's cravings and desires and uh and that's that's the game you're playing right and it's just yeah. like it's such a fucking it's, lie yeah that's not true man that's right. not how that's not the game you're playing yeah that's that's how i was brought up man it's just yeah. like oh this is life you go to you go to school, make something out of yourself. You get married to your high school sweetheart, have a couple kids, and that's the end of life. And yeah. that's what I was raised on, dude, for a long time, man. And I, and I was like, getting older, I was like, man, like I was kind of misled, dude. Like that's not yeah. what really life is about, man. You know, life's about experiences, like going out there, seeing other things, man. You know, and like I just back then, man, I just I was told a lot of bullshit. Yeah. You know, and it sucks. You know. You yeah, got to figure out how to read bullshit. Yeah, which I mean, I'm slowly coming together. It's like okay, like I'm starting to realize what's true and what's not. Yeah. You know? um, well, and that's the other that's the other problem. Another another thing I like to bring up a lot is that um, what is 
actually true? What can you actually know right. as a human being yeah. that you can say 110% this is the truth? Yeah. It's like, uh, I, I can't land on a single thing yeah. that is like that, where it's just like, no, this is the way it is, and I know for sure yeah. this is the way it is, because I don't know shit. Mm-hmm. I can never know anything. I can have an opinion about the way things make me feel mm-hmm. and the information that I've absorbed in the time I was here, right? And But right. who knows if that information was true, right? Yeah. Because we don't know what true really ends up being. You know, where, where did you get all this information? Why, why is it true? Well, because right. this one, this book fucking says it is. Right. Well, who wrote that book? Right. You know, that How whole they, game. Yeah. How and do you I just, know if it's even true? Yeah. You know I mean? And you just get to the point where you go, oh, I can't know anything. <laughs> I'm not allowed to. Right. That's, it's okay though. Yeah. But yeah. it's that, um, that delusion that you think you know shit. Right. That's a big hurdle to get over. Yeah. Where people just know, I know the way it is. I'm for sure about this. Yeah. And it's like, but you don't. Right. You have That's, your opinion. Right. And you have things that you like about the yeah. way that you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, but dude. that's and not the way that it is. There's so many people like that too, man, that just can't drop their egos. It's like, dude, yeah. you don't know everything. You don't know anything about this like water bowl. Oh, sure. Sure I do. It says Kirkland purified water. Yeah. It's purified water. It's done. You know, it's done. Yeah, Obviously. You, I know you, everything. <laughs> And I, I can't stand those type of people, man. Yeah, it doesn't like, go anywhere. No, it doesn't, man. It's just like, you're just full of it, man. The same kind of like, people you see on Facebook going, this is the fucking way it should be, right. and fight me about it in yeah. the comments. Let's go. Yeah. You know, I'm a truth There's seeker. Just, it's like, no, you're a fucking troll. <laughs> you just want to tell everybody they're wrong Yeah. because you're and feeding your ego and you're feeding into your power. Those type of people, too, just I think they don't get enough attention, man. I think people like that, mm-hmm. that put up, like, posts like that, fight me about it. That's just... Yeah. An attention grab, dude. It's like, you got nothing else better to do, man. Yeah. Like, why, what's the point in all that? Fighting and all that shit, like political posts, all that crap, dude. Just like, there's no point. That's a waste of your energy. Yeah. That's a waste of your love, man. You yeah. could be spending all that energy and time something else. focusing on yourself, right. on your art, yeah. on just being awesome. Because sure. once you get that fucking bullshit away from you... Yeah. And you just let go of of all these labels and the whole, like, I am Jason thing, yeah. you know, like, well, Jason's a character I'm playing right now. Right. He's pretty, uh, I dig him, you yeah. know, I dig this character that I'm in for a little bit. Yeah. I don't um, attach myself mm-hmm. to it. I, I mean, I, I'm sure I do. There's some in there that I'm yeah. still attaching myself to things. Yeah. But, um, but that's the game I play now, right? I... I focus and I meditate and I find problems right. and that, uh, you know, or, um, you know, things that are, um, things that are working for the illusion, right. for the idea that this three dimensional world on this meat body mm-hmm. are all there is, yeah. you know, all those habits that I've developed over the last three, three and a half decades. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of them. Yeah. And, um, this month in particular, I've been really super clean and and uh, trying to just purify as much as possible and meditate and meditate and exercise and read and meditate and focus on mantras and, and all these techniques. Like I was saying, wait, 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 wait you got this. You're asking me about this stuff. So I brought my, uh, this is one of the books I've been really into. I actually finished it today, yeah. which I'm stoked on, which is the uh, Be Here Now. Where's that camera? There it is. Ram Dass, man. I love Ram Dass. Yeah. He's fantastic. Yeah. And um and so I've been I've been studying some of his stuff and uh and and following it just you know, faithfully. Mm-hmm. You know, you just uh, you're not gonna learn anything if you walk into it with a closed mind. So right. you just go, Yeah, sure. Yeah. I'll dig anything for a little while with an open mind. Right. And see if it works for me. If it doesn't work for me, okay. Yeah. Then I, that's not my flow right now, you know, that kind yeah. of hippie talk. Yeah. And uh and so yeah, so I've been uh I've been messing with this. And I've been doing all kinds of rituals. Here's one I want to sh- just uh, share on the podcast, which is uh, the mantra for taking dope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Here we go. Om Shiva Shankara Hari Hari Ganja. That's it. That's it. You just say that, and then you're like, you're right. 
Yeah. Right. <laughs> but it's just rituals. There's a, there's yeah. all kinds of them, right? There's all kinds of mantras and shit that go along with it. But, um, it's all about getting in the spirit and yeah. getting in, uh, getting in this right place, man, yeah. this right frame of yourself. mind. Yeah. yeah. And getting in touch with yourself and, and simultaneously like getting yeah. in touch with God or Brahman, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, the universe, whatever yeah. you want to call all of this that's happening. Right. Cause it's right. Cause it's, we're not separate from that. Right. It, yeah. We're all part of this whole fucking flow. This, this fucking wave that's occurring. Yeah. And we feel like, Oh, we're, we're in this box. Right. Right. And, uh, there's separate things I can reach through the air and everything, but it's like, man, if you look at it in all kinds of different ways, right. And the room is filled with gas, yeah. uh, and all kinds of particle particles floating around through the air. Mm-hmm. And I mean, this is not an empty vacuum chamber that we're in. No, it's I'm not. touching things right now. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's all kinds of shit happening around me that I'm not even aware of. It's, yeah. it's not a hollow box that we're in. Right. We're all tied to all this stuff, you yeah. know? And we're all in this together, too, man. Like, that's, you know, this, it's just been a crazy year, dude, as you know. I mean, it's just like one thing after another, man, and people just don't uh, take time to, like, realize, like, you know what? Like, it's okay. Everything's all right. Like, we don't need to be caught up in this bullshit, man, you know? And that's why I hate racism, man. It's just like, it's, there's no point in it, man. No one's greater than, no one's greater than no one, you know? Mm -hmm. We're all in this together, dude. We yeah. all bleed the same color. It's you know, we're all but. we're all individually a unique thing too, right? You know, like uh, I might be considered a white guy and you're a white guy, right? But right. you got long hair, I got short hair. You know, yeah. you wear a hat, I don't got it. I I'm doing this without a hat on, aren't I? Fuck, I fucked up so bad I didn't even hey, realize. Man, your hair looks great, dude. My hair looks terrible, <laughs> baby. <laughs> why'd you let me go on camera without a fucking hat on? <laughs> Oh my gosh! Look at this. Oh, the dude, hair's it's not like that bad. This is a porcupine look. Dude. Uh, hair's not that okay. bad. It was a lot worse. It's starting to grow back out. <laughs> now, uh, are you gonna get it back to like the way it was, dude? Cause no, I'm just had, gonna like, get it to where I can comb it back again. I just yeah. had my uh, my hairstylist. I said cut it short, and yeah. she just goes chop all your fucking hair off. That's not what I fucking said. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't yeah. say chop all my hair off. Yeah, and sure enough, she did. She, she sure did. Good. And it looked good for like two days. It didn't even look good. It didn't look good for at all for me. It's not. It's not my hair. You yeah. know, like I've thin hair and a round head. <laughs> it was. She was. She gave me a haircut for a dude with a square head and thick yeah. hair. And it's right. like you know, it's not who I am. Yeah. It's like I, I got a big fucking round head. So <laughs> it looks like shit. She gives you the mirror and you look at it. It's like it's not me. Just fucking smash that mirror. It's like what's wrong with you? No hat. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? You know I'm a child. I can't take care of myself. Bro, you want me to, you to borrow my hat, dude? That's already too late. I know, man. It's all ruined. <laughs> Start the whole thing over. Cut it. <laughs> We're fucking two hours in. Cut it. Uh, um, but, yeah. Yeah, dude, like, back to, um, like, discovering yourself. Like, for me, man, like, I just... I've been that type of person that's just like go with the flow type guy. You know, I'm not a confrontational person. Yeah. I don't like fighting. I and I have a lot of patience, dude. Like I just can't get angry like how some people do, man. Like it's just like it takes a lot for me to that's get angry. It's a mad, blessing, dude. by the way, man. Dude. You I, should really be thankful for that because I am yeah, not that person. Man, I really am. Like like if if shit's going down, dude, like I'm just like, oh, whatever. Like that's not my problem, you know, it's not my issue. Like and I have this friend that's like, no, you don't understand. Like, this person, like, fucking talked shit about you, dude. Like, and you're gonna, just going to let it slip? I'm like, yeah. Like, what's... Yeah. What's his opinion matter? Right. So yeah, what? Dude. Yeah. I'm just not a very... It, it, like I said, it just takes a lot for me to get to that fucking breaking point, dude. And I've, I have in my past yeah. here and there, but, dude, I'm thankful that I'm not that type of person, man. Uh, I'm, just like, I, I'm a mess. I've spent all day trying to be that guy. Yeah. To be completely honest, I uh, I walk around with a mantra in my head, trying to keep my thoughts calm, and I mm-hmm. uh, I try to focus and uh, and always kind of you know be here. Right. But um, the second I'm like distracted, something will come along and knock something over, or not work right, or do something wrong, and then this this little spark clicks in my head you know and it's like uh let's get pissed off about it 
and, and just for some reason, man, you know, and I think it's, uh, it's just, you know, I was, um, and I was brought up to be a spoiled fucking white kid, you know? Mm-hmm. And so there's all that residual bratty bullshit, right? Self and self absorbed yeah. reactionary, like, subconscious hypnosis in there right. like something didn't go my way through a fucking tantrum right and it's sure. like it's yeah. the most childish reaction you can fucking have about things yeah and um but it's like a go-to for my brain and you know that's part of my practice part of my discipline uh is focusing on not reacting at all yeah. don't react right observe mm-hmm. and take action yeah but don't just respond to things right. in whatever irrational way yeah. your fucking brain tells you to respond to things because exactly. it's, ne- it's not going to be the, it, a reaction is never good. Yeah. Right. I mean, unless you're like, you know, unless you're talking about like, oh, I fucking caught the thing real quick, you know, like, right. a, but like an emotional response is what I'm trying to talk about where yeah. an emotional reaction to any occurrence is never a fucking good one. It's, yeah. it's. It's always best to observe right, and se- That's, separate yourself from the occurrence. That's you know? what I've been trying to do, too, man. I just, like, observe, like, look at what exactly what I'm dealing with. Yeah. You know I and mean? just, like, kind of, like, well, like, let's think about this before you engage into something that you're going to regret, dude. Like, for me, like, you know, I'm that type of person that's, like, I want to try to help everyone, dude. You know, I want to, like, bring them up on their feet. Like, no, you got this, man. Like... Just keep going. Like I, yeah. I want to, I want to be helpful, dude. You know, but at the same time, you gotta realize, like, you can't help everyone, dude. You can't. That was gonna be my next thing. Is yeah. is that position? It's, and I've tried to do that too. And I've helped a lot of people in my life. Yeah. Um. And and been re- really sacrificial about that, and like trying to do whatever I can to sure. lift up those around me. Yeah. And um. After a certain amount of time, you realize that you're supposed to be lifting yourself up. Yeah. All this effort, it, mm-hmm. you know, like the best way. And, and, and of course, I'm not saying don't fucking help anybody. Right. That's, not, that's absurd. Yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is um, focus your attentions at being a better you. Right. And in being a better you, you yeah. help others by example. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And, and you're also a more calm person to be around. And, of course, I can help, you know, yeah. like in that situation. Or you're more... Um, more apt to actually show up right when people ask about you or you know request your company right they're like hey come to our party come to our event and it's like if you say you're going to be there and you're a disciplined person who's been who's not a fucking mess and goes oh i just i said i'd be there but i just fucking can't today right it's too much anxiety to leave my house right and um (laughs) yeah and that's real shit that people are dealing with yeah but if you're focusing mm-hmm. every day, right, you don't get to that point yeah. where you're just you're fucking lost. Well, when's the last time you meditated? Oh, I I don't meditate. Right. How much water did you drink today? Right. I don't like water. It doesn't taste good. Right. It's <laughs> it tastes just like, like nothing, man. It's like okay, <laughs> it's no flavor. Two steps back. Yeah. Love yourself. Yeah. Give yourself good shit. You know. Right. Put good stuff in your body. Your body will feel good. Yeah. You know. And Put it, good stuff in your brain. Yeah. Your brain will not. Uh, you know, destroy you. Right. Because your brain could just, it oh, can really easily. fucking ruin you, man. Yeah. Yeah. And I really think that's my downfall too, man. Because like I put more of my energy and focus onto like, hey, dude, let me help you. Like, I know I'm not going to get anything out of this, man. Like, I'm sacrificing my time, my well-being to better you. It's literally. And, uh, you know, it's, it's eating me up, man. Yeah. Like, it really you has. You can't, you can't hold the fucking whole world on your shoulders. Yeah. You just can't do it. Yeah. And um, this is just this is a lesson I've learned very recently, mm-hmm. just this month. Like I said, I like just this month, I really tied it down. I really got disciplined. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything but go to my one friend's birthday party yeah. the whole month. It's like no, just say no to people. Right. That's it's okay to do that. You know, like you yeah. don't have to fucking always be doing something. With your friends. You don't yeah. always have to be out. Yeah. You don't have, always have to be online. Yeah. And you don't always have to have the fucking TV on. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all this overstimulation and over fucking just like just information coming in from all directions. Yeah. And you're trying to make everybody happy or like yeah. not be a dick. And it's like, nah, be a dick. 
Yeah. If that's what they're going to call you for loving yourself and being like, um, I can't do that today because uh, that ties into just my workout. Yeah. I'm sorry. And they're like, oh, you can't work out tomorrow? Oh, I'm going to work out tomorrow as yeah. well. Right. But I'm not going to sacrifice my workout for you. Right. Because this isn't, this is me, right? I'm playing the me game. I'm playing right. Jason. Yeah. Right? Yep. I'm not playing the Zach game. Yeah. Right? So I'm not, I can't concern myself with things that you should be concerned about. Right. And taking care of on your own. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Um, it just comes down to like looking out for yourself, man. Yeah. Bettering yourself, you know, and that's like, that's the same with me, man. I just need to, uh, you know, just focus more on, on how can I get better with myself? You know, I just, I, cause I, like I said, I'm a caring person, man. Like I just like yeah. want to check up with people and be like, Hey man, like if you need anything, let me know. Like, and this is the killer part too, man. That just kind of strikes me. It's like when you help these people, yeah. like in return, if you ask for their help, they just like, well, oh, I can't. Yeah. You know, it's just like, well, I've been there for you numerous times. There's and it's no like trust gotta, there. Yeah. And you just got to realize, it's just like, was that really my true friend? Or, you know, it's just, yeah. it's such a shitty feeling, man. You know, you have to, it's, you have to let things go. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it, the, life's always fucking changing. Life's yeah. always gonna evolve into the next thing. You right. can't fucking hang on to the past right. as much as you like your old friends, right. right? It's just like, that's not where you are anymore. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you can't hang out with them or sure. be their friends, sure. right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that your world has to revolve around the shit that their world revolves around. That they're going through, yeah. Yeah, like you can move forward in your life. Mm -hmm. You can make yourself better. Yeah. And um, and the second I let down everybody, like yeah. literally, okay, I, uh, let's say I let, I, don't, I didn't really let down anybody, but like I let them, I'll let them all down. Yeah. It's okay. Those are your problems, right? Right. I have a lot of problems too yeah. that I'm working on, yeah. right? And none of them are getting solved when I'm doing your problems. Right. Uh, and this has been one of the best months I've ever fucking had. Like mentally, physically, mm -hmm. you know, like I, I fucking my diet's great. Yeah. Uh, I, I just can't, I can't rave enough about the fucking focus and the discipline and, and getting and loving yourself and, yeah. you know, being one with the universe as I've been being, like waking up at six in the morning, going to bed at fucking nine. Yeah. It's like, you know, that I'm, I'm following the, like, like when the moon comes out, Oh, it's my buddy, the moon. Oh, but the sun's down. I got to go to bed, but that fucking thing's cool. Right. Uh, I, I just, I'm like, I'm watching everything around me, you know, I'm not turning the fucking TV on until yeah. late at evening, even the evening we're eating dinner. Okay. Let's fucking watch a little bit, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's not like this obsession all day that it used to be. It's yeah. It's distractions, man. All these yeah. like materialistic things. They're just distractions from what is really important, you yeah. know, and that's yourself. That's your well being. That's your loved one's well being. You know, it just, it takes away just, I don't know, man, trying to find your true self, dude. You know, people that's, just get so caught up on a, you know, bullshit like, oh, what's on the news or, oh, let's see the show on Netflix. It's like, no, man, why don't we just like go for like a walk or something, dude, just kind of clear our minds. Yeah. People just get. Don't bring the Bluetooth. Exactly, man. Just let go of <laughs> Just listen to the birds. Man. Right. Just listen to the birds, listen to the wind, yeah. whatever, man, you know, just get in touch with uh, nature, you know, and uh yeah, I mean, like I said, man, I'm just slowly, like, just building myself up, and I just, I want to get better, man. I want to get better. It's a slow process that yeah. ramps. Like, I started with, um, I start, I, I was just having a conversation with my brother, like, uh, a month and a half ago about, oh, yeah, like, we, we, we definitely make an effort, right, to, like, yeah. eat two veggie dishes and then whatever the fuck we want for dinner. Sure. And then like once a week we make an effort to eat veggie at dinner too. So it's like, oh, that's a whole veggie day. And that right. was kind of what I was doing for a really long time. Yeah. But for the most part, I was eating whatever the fuck I wanted. And then now it's, it's kind of, it, we took that next step, which was like, oh, I don't know if I can, I, I was, I was apprehensive about it. Of course I was like, right. oh man, I'm going to eat fucking vegetables all the time. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah. I love it to death, but it, it took a long time for me to be ready for that. Yeah. And it, you know, you, you, you just, you can't rush those kind of things. I mean, yeah. you can jump into them sure. and, you know, straighten by fire, but, mm -hmm. um, that's a rough way to go too. And, part, yeah. Man. And it's, it's a lot better to just. Yeah. Just step by step, mm -hmm. take another step. 
take another right. step. You know, it's, it's, it might not be in your comfort zone, but that's where you yeah. grow. You got to go out of your comfort zone to actually accomplish See, anything. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get to, man. Like I'm trying to like focus more on like, okay, like, yeah, you want this because it's, it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's going to be, you know, comfort food, all this shit, yeah. dude. But at the same time, you know, what's right, man. Yeah. You want to go for this. You want to sacrifice that yeah. in order to get better doing this. Like, I just got to trust myself, man. I, I've, I've been trying, dude. That's hard, dude. Like, I try to not eat past 9 o'clock. It's like, fuck, That's man. another game I play. I'm fucking, like, still hungry, dude. I don't eat my breakfast till noon and yeah. uh, 8. 8.30, I'm shut down. Depends on how really? late we eat dinner, you know. But, like, once dinner's done, it's like yeah. brush your fucking teeth, take your night vitamins, and yeah. drink water the rest of the night. That's it, huh? Yeah. Oh, and wow. and so you keep your body on that, yeah. that, that fucking keto fat-burning cycle or, you know. Um, so you do, like, two meals a day? Three. Or just I do three. All three? I do okay. uh, I do my oatmeal right at noon. Right at so noon. So, like, I'm, I'm wrapping my meditation up right into my fucking yoga. I'm right into my oatmeal. You know, yeah. it's like... Uh, uh, right when I'm done, it's like sweet. I can eat, you know, oh. or shower and eat whatever it ends up being. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, and then that's like noon, and then I do my whole day. You know, yeah. noon to eight. Yeah. Get shit done. Yeah. You, you know, it's like fucking working on the podcast and editing and and uh, you know, social media bullshit and, and yeah. you know, learning how all these new camera pieces work and mm-hmm. it's been a lot. And yeah. writing and figuring out the next step and the next step and the next step and the next step. Yeah. We got a website we're about done with. Kick ass, man. Yeah. Got new logos being designed. Nice, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys are, I, I'm telling you what, man. I mean, I love what you're doing, man. Thank like, you. Yeah, dude, of course, man. I, uh, you know, I've been looking at uh, your other, like, episodes and stuff. I'm like, dude, this guy's got a fucking cranking, man. Keep it going, dude. Yeah. Space Brain Station to the fullest. That's it's it. badass, man. Consistency. You know? And it's such podcast, man. It's there's a beauty to it man there's such a freedom like you just like let's just talk dude yeah. it's like not like just about anything everything dude and i, I love that dude there I should be too. more you know i agree man you i know? think that uh yeah that's that's one of the things i really like doing it yeah. and i get to talk about real shit it's yeah. not i'm not just up here trying to tell jokes we can talk about meditation we can talk about healthy eating right and we can talk about proper exercise yeah. this shit's really important to me yeah like it's so important. It's important to everybody. They just don't realize it yet, right? right. It's like, fuck, man, you really got to get on yeah. loving your body and loving yourself because yeah. there's no better feeling. Mm-hmm. There's no better feeling. Right. You can't get it out of a bottle. No, you can't, man. You got to just work for it. Yep. You got to work really hard it for it. It takes work and dedication, yeah. man. But then after a while, it's like the work kind of flips. It yeah. turns into play, man. True. It turns into, I love this. I can't wait to exercise i can't wait to meditate i can't yeah. wait to read this book i'm really into it and uh and it just takes time yeah and, and so get better as, so as far as like workouts do like what yeah. do you do as far as like working out like i um, do the p90x workout okay so um when we don't have this in the way it's yeah. p90x week uh-huh. and then when this is in the way i do um uh, freeform yoga that I've been working on, which is just basically the the yoga I do is it's a sixty minute routine that's all the hardest moves I can do all all in a row. That's great. Right? That's Challenging I just, yourself. I just practice getting those moves yep. tighter. Yeah. And it's it's really rough. Um, <laughs> it, it it it's an ass kicker. Yeah. And then um and then I do my Murph. Yeah. Which is uh, you run a mile. Yeah. And then you do 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 si- squats, and wow. 400. I do 400 sit-ups with it as well. Yeah. Uh, and then you run another mile. Wow. Man. And that's a that's a motherfucker. And so I'm I, sure, I break that down into like 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. Uh, but I'm about to sw- switch it to, you know, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and then I do a... Um, I do a... Um, shoulder a handstand push-up routine oh, where you focus on yeah. banging out maximum handstand push-ups wow because um like a lot of the yoga moves it's this it's solely focused on strengthen the weaknesses in yoga right uh, where i am uh I, i'm weak in the arms my arms are small my shoulders are small yeah. so coming off the ground doing that handstand push-up that yeah. is um that's probably one of the di- most difficult things for me yeah and so i have a whole routine dedicated to strengthening that weakness of mine that's cool, man. Uh, yeah. Other than that, I'll I'll throw Kempo in there. Yeah. You know, the P90X Kempo. Badass. That's a great workout. And yeah. You, and you don't need a lot of space to do it. Just mm-hmm. kicks and punches. 
and fucking that'll burn some calories and it's it's good you know you, you get you get your fight training in yeah i'm trying to gear up and get back into jujitsu oh dude so I've always, i keep hurting myself yeah i see i want to get into that type of stuff man i've been following this guy on youtube uh he's a workout instructor his name is uh chris uh it starts with an i i hear a chris yeah. i hear a yeah dude this guy is fucking ripped man like he's just like dude i don't know some of the workouts he does man it's like how do you do that dude it's like it's insane to me man it's just like commitment yeah and uh i've been following him man that's where i got all the planks like the different planking positions you planks can do. rough it is man yeah i guess. get your core really tight <laughs> dude that's what i'm trying to go for man i'm like there's just one move where uh, he shows his students it's like all right you lift your legs up and then you just do this for like 45 seconds a minute however long you want to do it man and that yeah. fucking shit hurts dude like especially like because he does it for two minutes straight dude yeah, yeah. i'm like you're a fucking psycho man <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm trying to get there to that level dude but i'll get there eventually it always so, will man just work work towards a goal and you'll yeah. achieve that goal man that's yeah. definitely the way to do it yeah well shit i need to put the bigger hard drive in because we are out of space i have 45 seconds to say we're out of here All so right. uh, i'd like to thank my guest once again uh zachary tyler rubble yes sir bad motherfucker guitar player for uh, baker's dozen Thanks, we didn't sir. even really get into the baker's dozen thing that way anyways yeah. uh yeah so uh thanks for coming this has yes, been sir. to the fullest and uh fade to black thank you man thank you brother hey everyone thanks for watching my podcast you can check out more podcasts right here and subscribe by clicking right here we are a new podcast every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time.